Witchery and Bedlam Melancholy Main Magics Book 3 By Sierra Graves Chapter 1 Helena Snow fell from the sky, and I leaned my head back watching. Cold flakes landed on my forehead and became stuck in my eyelashes. It would have been a beautiful sight, if we weren't in danger. Most people had stepped out into the streets by now, wondering what was going on. It'd be nice if we could give them some sort of answer. After Rena pointed out we were trapped in a snow globe, I'd been racking my brain, wondering if this was a curse or had been caused by another hex bag. Nothing I came up with explained our current predicament. Douglas, Vic, Lincoln, Edric and Norn had gone to search the perimeter of the town, to see if we were indeed stuck under this shimmering dome. You two have any idea what could cause this? Hadley asked. I shook my head. A snow globe spell? Fairly sure that would have drawn our attention when we were going through the old books, I muttered. You have to admit though, it's kind of pretty. Hadley tilted her head, and her expression indicated that maybe I'd gone crazy. Rena's brows shot upward to her hairline. What? I'm allowed to find beauty in yet another messed up situation, I complained. Rena smirked. Hadley rolled her eyes. Just because you're floating high on cloud nine right now, she mumbled, causing me to frown. Never mind. I think we should head to the shop and see if we can find. What the hell is this? We winced at the same time at Sheriff Bernie's yelling. He stomped over, hands on his hips, shaking his head, eyes narrowed. I rushed forward to greet him with a charming smile and a comforting hand on his arm. I didn't need to be an empath to understand precisely what he felt. Sheriff, good morning. I strove for a grin. He didn't return the greeting. Helena. Care to explain why I'm getting calls from people screaming about being trapped in melancholy by an invisible barrier? We're working on it. Nothing to worry about. You're working on it, he repeated loudly. What does that mean? What you think it means, Sheriff, Hadley chimed in. His eyes widened for a few seconds. Pinching the bridge of his nose, he muttered under his breath, Why didn't I take the job out in Montana? Hate to break it to you, but there are witches in every state, I whispered to the Sheriff, patting his shoulder consolingly. Well, every state but Utah, I think. He gave me an odd look, still pinching his nose. Mormons, I added and shook my head. Sheriff Bernie's lips thinned, his frown morphing into a scowl. I want you three at the station right now. Sure, we can do that, I assured him. Hadley, you want to text Edric and let him know where to meet us when they're done with their search? She nodded and pulled out her phone. Sheriff Bernie watched her intently until Mayor Dillwood approached. He shook hands with the sheriff and pointed to his wrecked car at the edge of town. The shimmering wall was still standing, undamaged by his vehicle. His car was banged up. Fixing it was the least I could do. I thought of the spell to repair an item and closed my eyes. The words flowed through my mind, and with a twist of my wrist and a little flick of my fingers, the mayor's car gave a metallic groan. I opened my eyes to find it good as new. Well, almost as good as new. Helena. Mayor Dillwood asked while the sheriff chuckled, Why is my car purple? I'll, uh, I'll fix it, I promised. Just you know, maybe later. I think my mind's a wee bit scattered. Besides, I think purple suits you. He shook his head, glancing skyward. I picked up his agitation, followed by appreciation. Those two emotions didn't last long, then he was back to worrying about what was going on in his town. Once Hadley sent the text to Edric, the three of us followed Sheriff Bernie and the mayor to the small police station. We moved through crowds of people catching snowflakes and musing about what had caused this strange phenomenon. Most gazes turned toward us, and I gave them an encouraging smile that we'd fix this. Somehow, those who still didn't believe there was magic in this town kept talking about it being a government conspiracy. I laughed when Mindy, our local crazy lady, shouted her conjectures to anyone who would listen. Thankfully, no one really did. Old man Jenkins helped to her out by calling her out for being a conspiracy nutcase. The ever-flowing tide of emotions in the crowd battered at me,
the longer I was around them all. I bit the inside of my cheek to distract my mind, while at the same time I hummed loudly to tune them out. Fear was the prevalent emotion, and it seeped into me like it was my own. Rena squeezed my right hand. Hadley took my left. They lent me their strength, to push back the overwhelming sensations coming from every single person in town. Thanks, I mumbled giving my head a shake. Most of the time, people's emotions didn't run this high. Over the last few days of dealing with Rena and Mazeroth, I'd been surrounded by my own terror at the idea of losing her. That, combined with Hadley's fear and the demon hunter's anger had worn me out. I wasn't ready to deal with so much so fast. Then there were the other emotions I had yet to understand, the ones that had caught me completely off guard when I was introduced to Douglas. Or maybe it was after I first met him, and debated casting his ass all the way to Australia if it would keep him and Norn away from Rena. I still couldn't believe my baby sister found her soulmate. And Hadley was finally with Edric. Then there was me, wondering if what I felt for Douglas was real or just my wanting there to be something between us so I wouldn't be alone. I hated thinking I was going to be the sole sister who ended up without a happy ending. Helena? Rena asked, giving my hand another squeeze. I'm good, I promised, brandishing a smile. Her furrowed brow informed me she didn't buy it for a second. Before she could ask anything else, we were at the station. Sheriff Bernie directed us to his office. I let go of my sister's hands and sat in one of the chairs surrounding a small, round table to the side of his desk. Absently, I picked at my nails. The bright green polish had chipped and needed a fresh coat. I hadn't really fixed my hair in the last week either, aside from brushing it out. It was growing past its usual short length, but maybe it was time for a change. I shifted uncomfortably in the chair, waiting for someone to start talking so I could distract myself with conversation instead of the confused torrent that was currently my mind. So, Sheriff Bernie said, leaning back in his creaky chair, studying my sisters and me, lay it on me and no sugarcoating. All of it. Every weird thing that's been going on for weeks now. Rena started to shake her head but Hadley said, You're sure? Hadley, Rena tried, but our older sister gave her a look and she sighed, sinking into the chair next to me. Yeah, sure, why not drag everyone else into our lives? I understood her reluctance to bring up Mazeroth, after the near-death experience she'd gone through with Norn, but the sheriff was right. He had a right to know what was going on in his town, and who the culprit was. Hadley's gaze flicked to me. I shrugged. I gave her the floor to catch up Sheriff Bernie on everything we'd neglected to tell him. Starting with the full details of the hex bag that had threatened to plunge the town into permanent darkness. Mayor Dillwood paled more with every word she said, and eventually he too was sitting down, holding a hand to his face. I wasn't sure his eyes could get any wider. When Hadley came to the part about Rena, Norn, and the demon now trapped in a magical cage formed between their souls, he slouched in his chair. Sheriff Bernie glanced at him, opened the bottom drawer of his desk, and pulled out a bottle of whiskey. He drew out two glasses, filled one, and handed it to the mayor. It'll help. It's not even noon yet, the mayor complained. I think today's an exception, Sean, Bernie told him as he poured a second glass for himself and took a healthy gulp. Right, demon. That explains a lot, he added quietly with a nod toward Rena. She tilted her head back and forth. Now you know, right? I'm not sure if that's better or not, Sean murmured into his glass. He shook his head, gave in and shot the entire glass back, coughing and sputtering as he held it out for more. Honestly, they were taking it better than I thought they would. So this snow globe. Is that because of the demon? Hadley glanced at me as if asking what she should say next. They want the truth, I reminded her. So, let's give them the truth. And what's the truth? Bernie asked. Heather, I said when Hadley took too long to respond. We think Heather's back. And we believe she's brought a friend. She's back? Sean sputtered. You're sure? There have been a few signs, I admitted. We'd hoped we were wrong, but you know the whole town being trapped in a snow globe kind of seals the deal. That and a few other hints. She's back. 
and we'll do what we can to stop whatever she and her boyfriend are up to. When Heather turned against us, it hadn't been quiet. The entire town heard the fight that went down at the house. Bernie, his four deputies, Sean, and a few others had rushed over. They had seen the commotion. The lawn had been scorched, and we'd sported a few bruises and cuts from Heather's outburst of power. Logan's presence when he'd taken her away hadn't helped matters. I shivered, remembering the stench of his dark magic. It had tainted the grounds for months after. We had to cast cleansing rituals weekly to get rid of the traces he'd left behind. And now Heather was back to do who knew what. Voices came from outside the sheriff's door. Edric, Norn, and Douglas walked in, their expressions and the brush of annoyance I sensed told me precisely what they were going to say. Sheriff, Edric said, nodding toward the older man. The barrier is solid all the way around. There's no getting in or out of melancholy. Not even by water. We're trapped. Bernie picked up his whiskey and sighed. Perfect. He finished off the amber-colored liquid, set the empty glass down and stood. What do you need from me? I exchanged a glance with my sisters. Just like that? I asked. He placed his wide-brimmed hat on his head and laughed. Yeah, just like that. This is your magic mess. I told myself when I took this post, I'd never try to understand how it all works. Save myself a few headaches, but I do have a town full of people who are confused and scared out of their wits. So I'll take care of them and you deal with your sister. Deal. Rena and I rose, making for the door. Guess we'll get started figuring out what this spell is, I said. Back to the shop, everyone. Edric and Hadley walked out together, Rena and Norn right behind them, their hands clasped. He leaned over and whispered something in her ear. She laughed and smacked his arm. Douglas smiled at me and motioned me to go ahead of him. I did, careful to keep space between us. I was near the door of the station when I tripped over a chair and stumbled. A hand caught my elbow, preventing me from falling on my face. Douglas. I threw a thankful smile over my shoulder. His dark green eyes narrowed. He frowned, looked he wanted to say something. Then the moment passed, and he let go of my arm. The bit of distance between us wasn't enough for me not to pick up on his swirling storm of emotions, identical to my own. I hurried out of the station, with him right behind me. We met up with the others at the shop. Vic and Lincoln were waiting for us, both extremely agitated. I gritted my teeth against their intense emotions, and entered the shop. We were able to get a few calls out, but it was hit and miss, Vic informed us as the door closed behind her. Communication is going to be a pain while we're inside this, this. Snow globe, Rena supplied. Right. Snow globe. Vic paced around the shop like a caged animal. I don't like this. Why trap us all here? What's the end game? I think we need to worry about lifting the spell, Douglas said. We can deal with the why later. Once we know we can get out of here when the shit hits the fan. Helena, you said you had some books that might help? Upstairs. Not sure if there's anything in them or not, but it's worth a shot. I'll see if there's anyone in town who's not supposed to be here, Rena said, shrugging. I have a spell or two that might flush unwanted visitors out. She and Norn headed for the kitchen, leaving Hadley and Edric with Vic and Lincoln. And I guess we'll set up a command center. Lincoln tugged on his beard. Try to keep some sense of order with this sheriff of yours. Do you have a map of the town? Vic asked Hadley. I do somewhere. It's enchanted, so we can use it to help keep track of where everyone is, and you can mark the barrier around town. She and Edric hurried away to find it. Helena. Huh? I turned around. Douglas gazed at me expectantly. He raised his brows. Right. Books. Upstairs just uh follow me I guess. I led the way, extremely aware of the hunter following close behind. I stumbled over my feet, and he righted me, a curious expression on his face. Figured of all days, I'd be ridiculously klutzy while he was around. Inside the office, I opened the secret door to the hidden room and scoured the shelves for the oldest spell books. 
Douglas waited patiently at the doorway. When I glanced over, he had his arms crossed, a blank look on his face, his shoulder resting against the frame. His long messy hair was pulled back, the scruff on his face was still there. I kept trying to search the shelves in front of me, but found myself too busy taking in the sight of his lean form. The small rips in the knees of his jeans, the black t-shirt beneath the currently unbuttoned green flannel shirt completed his laid-back, give-no-shits ensemble. When my gaze shot back to his face, his eyes crinkled at the corners and his brow furrowed. Sorry, I mumbled, returning to the books, hating how my cheeks burned. So that's it then? That's what? I asked, refusing to look at him again. He came toward me. My heart fluttered, my hands shook. We're not going to talk about it, at all. I pretended I was reading a book title, to buy myself some time to come up with an answer. Or I was, until Douglas reached for my hands, and I had no choice but to focus on his intense green eyes. There's really nothing to talk about, I mean not right now. We're trapped in a snow globe. That sort of takes precedence over what happened between us. His lips twitched as he kept a firm hold of my hands. We kissed, Helena. I think we need to talk about it, just a little bit. Maybe decide what it means, or if it means anything. That's all I'm asking. I shifted from one foot to the other, but couldn't get any words to come out. We had kissed, and it had been beyond incredible. But that was last night, and today we were facing another crisis. That, and I honestly had no idea how I felt about the said kiss. Well, part of that was a lie. I knew how I felt, but I had no idea if what I was feeling was real or if it was even me. I'd been surrounded by too many heightened emotions emanating from my sisters and the guys. They were jumbled inside my head now. Sorting through them was a challenge. Then there was Douglas. He was so damned easy to talk to about everything. He was as into potions as I was, and had been interested in everything I'd been working on over the years. I'd never laughed so much with a guy. But after Rena had been saved from the demon plaguing her, he told me he'd be leaving with the other hunters. That had been last night. I'd been overcome with this horrible sensation of loneliness. The next thing I knew, I was wrapped in his arms and we were kissing. I hadn't wanted it to end. Panic set in when I realized I had no idea why I did it. Everyone else's emotions pushed in around me. I'd apologized, then hurried away. This morning he acted like nothing happened, and I expected him to leave melancholy and not look back. Only he hadn't, and now he was standing awfully close, looking at me like he wanted to kiss me all over again. I don't know, I blurted. He started to drop my hands, but I was the one who held on this time. He gave me a confused glance. Then we just what, act like it never happened. Look, you know how I am around people and their emotions, I rambled. Sometimes I don't know if it's them or me, and lately there's been so much going on that I haven't really had a chance to sit down and sort it all out. So last night the kiss and what I'm feeling right now, I can't honestly say it's me. At least not all me if that makes any sense whatsoever. Douglas nodded slowly but didn't let go of my hands. Then why don't you take some time to figure out what it is you are feeling? Trapped in a snow globe, remember? We are but this is important too. After talking to the three of you, I know how much you've given to your sisters over the years. Maybe this is when you need to step back and take care of yourself. I tugged my hands free. What's that supposed to mean? It means Rena is safe and Hadley seems to be doing fine too. It's time to focus on you. You make it sound like I'm falling apart. Aren't you close to doing just that? You admitted you have no idea if what you're feeling is you or someone else. Put your sisters and me and everyone in this town aside. Just recenter your mind. You want me to do that right now? Are you serious? Douglas backed away, and the annoying emptiness inside returned, leaving a strange hollow feeling in my chest. You and I both know our magic works better when we're centered, grounded. When we're not distracted. I snorted. I'm only distracted because you're up here giving me a lecture. He crossed his arms, staring me down, and the tension between us grew heavy. 
Right blame it all on me. I will, I snapped. You know what? I don't think the book I was thinking of is here. You can keep looking, but I'm going. I stormed past him for the door only to have him slide right into my path. His lips twitched, but I was in no mood to deal with him right then. I stepped to the left to go around him, but he simply moved with me until we were doing some ridiculous dance. I finally threw my arms up in aggravation and with a flourish of my wrist shoved him to the wall out of my path. Stay there, I ordered, smirking when he couldn't move from the wall. It wouldn't last long, but long enough for me to get out of there. Or not. I was just at the door of the office when his hand closed around my elbow. He spun me around, and when he opened his mouth to probably lecture me, I found myself on my toes and dragging his mouth down to mine. That kiss was all heat. I wrapped my arms around his neck. His hands found my hips. His lips moved over mine like they belonged there, and then my back was to the wall. I ran my fingers through his hair, tugging the band free. Then I opened my eyes and pushed him away, shattering the moment as quickly as it began. Shit, I whispered and stormed out of the office. He called my name but I didn't slow down. When I passed Hadley in the shop, I told her I was heading to the house to see what I could find there. She was asking me a question, but I waved her off and rushed outside into the cold. I forgot my coat and crossed my arms tightly around myself, lowering my head and bustling down the street. Quite a few people were still outside, talking about the latest strange event to hit melancholy. Thankfully, none of them tried to stop me, and I reached the gravel drive without incident. It was just a kiss, I muttered to myself. Two kisses. Two extremely hot intense kisses. They don't mean anything. My tingling lips, and the rush of heat shooting through me as if Douglas were holding me in his arms all over again, told me those weren't mere kisses. I wanted to believe what I was feeling was real, but there was too much going on for me to feel straight. Everything he said was spot on though. When was the last time I sat down and focused on myself and my emotions? The answer was years, which was probably why I was in this emotional whirlwind to begin with. Just deal with the crisis, and you can worry about him later, I told myself sternly. The temperature dropped as I neared the garden gate. The snowfall had picked up. The wind gusted at my back, making my teeth chatter. The tree branches groaned and creaked, urging me on faster. I was tempted to break into a run until a crow cawed, making me stumble over my feet. I skidded to a stop in the gravel. A large black crow, too large to be natural, circled and landed on the ground a few feet away. It lowered its head, shuddering and changing in shape and size until it was no longer a bird. When the woman raised her head, red hair hanging to her waist, a set of violet eyes filled with pain and fear looked back at me. My jaw dropped and all I could do was blink. The woman smiled sadly, taking a step forward. Hello, Helena. Long time, sister. Heather, I whispered. Great. How stupid was I that I'd left the shop alone. Chapter 2 Douglas I ran a hand down my face, cursed and hung my head. I dragged my unkempt hair out of my face with a band. All I'd needed was for her to tell me how she felt, but apparently, that was going to be a lot harder than I'd anticipated. Since the moment we'd met, I couldn't get her out of my mind. Despite the shit with Mazeroth, Norn and Rena, she'd been at the forefront of my thoughts day and night. That damned grin of hers was impossible to ignore, as was the sound of her voice. I threw my head back and glared at the ceiling, begging for a helpful voice to tell me what I was supposed to do. I was just as confused as she was. Hell, I was probably worse off. If only she'd let me get two words in. The moment I drew her into my arms last night, every dark memory of that dreaded night faded to the background. No deaths hung over my head. No guilt weighed me down until I could hardly breathe. There was just the witch in my arms with bright blue eyes that shone with such vibrance they took my breath away. It had been years since I felt a connection to another person, one that struck me deep and left its mark. As a hunter, there was no room for relationships. Getting too close meant too many chances for the enemy to take advantage, to use them against me. 
to watch yet another someone I cared for die. And now, I was faced with a woman who brought my magic back to life. Every time she was near, it surged through my veins as if trying to reach out to her. The floor creaked outside the office, and hoping it was Helena coming back to talk, I hurried out the door to come face to face with Hadley. Her brow arched, and she crossed her arms, nailing me with an intent gaze reminiscent of Helena. Hey. I shoved my hands in my pockets. Ah, uh, Helena went to the house to see if she could find the book there. I know. I saw her leave. I nodded slowly, waiting for her to say something else, but she just kept staring. Why are you still here? What? I'm not blind. I saw how red her cheeks were when she ran downstairs, Hadley informed me while I avoided her glance. And I also saw you two kissing last night. For the record, she kissed me both times, I said, feeling I was about to get told off by Hadley. All I tried to do today was ask her what she wanted. If she wanted to date, or hell, I don't know. I spun around, clasping my hands behind my head. Might have pissed her off in the process. How'd you manage that? I called her out for not taking care of herself. Emotionally, I mean. She's been all over the place since we came to town, and I don't have to be a seer to know she's been like this for years. I turned back to face her. Probably not my place to say that. This is all new for me, and I'm not sure what my next move should be. Hadley's arms fell to her sides as guilt filled her gaze. It's my fault she's so messed up. I blinked, confused. I expected to be yelled at for prying, not have her take the blame for Helena's current emotional upheaval. What did you do? She gave me a blank look, sucked in a breath and snapped, What do you think? I couldn't stop our oldest sister from turning against us, and then I let our youngest sister be possessed by a freaking demon. So for the last few years Helena's been there for Rena and me, trying to keep us from falling apart, and in the process, she let herself get a little lost, she ranted. Giving her head a hard shake, she rubbed her temple, sighing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw all that at you, but Helena's in the state she's in because of me. I doubt she believes that, I argued. Probably not, but she should, which is why, she continued firmly. I'm wondering why you're still standing here instead of going after her. I'm fairly sure she wants some space from me. I haven't exactly helped. Sounds like an excuse. A bad one, too. I'm not about to go after a witch whose powers might be a bit unstable. So you're scared? I blanched. That's not what I said. If she wanted me to go with her, then she would have asked, not run out of here after kissing me for the second time and leaving me extremely confused and annoyed that she won't take two damn seconds to focus on herself, I rambled. Sorry, my turn to apologize. Think she's got you all twisted around too, she mused with a smile. Yeah, you could say that. I rubbed the back of my neck and debated my next move. Helena was right. We were in the middle of a crisis, but if she kept using that as an excuse to avoid figuring out her emotions, she'd never get centered again. It's weird, I murmured. The second I saw her, something inside me felt lighter. And then we started talking, and I don't know how to explain it. You felt like you were never going to be alone again, Hadley chimed in. Sounds ridiculous, right? She grinned as she glanced over her shoulder. Edric and Norn's voices floated up to us, and she tilted her head back and forth, a thoughtful look appearing on her face. Not as ridiculous as you think. You and I both know there's some weird shit at work in our world. You really want to fight it now, when we're possibly going to be stuck in a snow globe forever. If I end up in some magical trap, I'm blaming you, I warned, striding around her toward the stairs. Douglas, she said, and I paused on the steps. She's not going to trust what she's feeling for you. It's happened before, a couple times actually. What has? I asked worriedly. Hadley bit her lip, then looked like she was about to break some sort of secret sister bond. You didn't hear this from me, all right. I nodded. She glanced around, as if looking for Helena or ascertaining we were alone. The last few times she dated anyone, and grew close to them, she ended up getting her emotions confused with theirs, and things didn't exactly work. 
Her magic would go all haywire, or she'd be way over the top emotional and end up chasing the guy away. Just find a way to get her back to trusting herself. What makes you think I even can? We just met, what, two weeks ago? Not even. Her smile, she whispered. I haven't seen her smile like she does around you in years. No pressure, right? I'll do what I can, but Hadley, no promises. I don't exactly have the best track record for holding down a relationship of any kind, either. Something tells me that's part of why you came to Melancholy. Not just to save Rena, but Helena, too. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to help you, too. She squeezed my arm, then motioned toward the steps. Go on before she finds a way to magically barricade herself in that damned house. I wanted to keep arguing that I wasn't going to be good for Helena. She might have issues with her emotions, but I had a dark past deeply tucked away. Every day was a fight to keep it where it belonged. In the past. Instead, though, my feet were moving, and I was running out of the shop without letting myself think too hard about what might come when I caught up to Helena. As I sprinted down the road, I wondered if I was going a bit crazy myself. The entire town of Melancholy, along with its inhabitants, were trapped inside a snow globe created by Heather and some evil sorcerer, and all I could think of was finding a way to convince Helena to take a chance on the two of us. What does that even mean? When I neared the gravel drive leading to the Moonfall home, I stopped short. It's not about you, I told myself sternly. Not right now. It's about her. She needs to focus on her emotions. You're going to help her, so keep your own shit out of it. Satisfied with my plan, and that it'd give me more time to understand what I was feeling for Helena, I continued up the drive. The air was cold, but the closer I came to the house, the more the temperature dropped until I was rolling down the sleeves of my shirt and fighting to keep my teeth from chattering. A shiver shot down my spine. I cupped my hands in front of my mouth, puffing into them to heat them up. Helena's voice sounded on the gusting winds. I slowed, frowning. What was she doing out in the cold? I just started walking again when a second voice met my ears. She sounded familiar, but I knew Hadley had stayed behind at the shop. So had Rena. I reached for the silver dagger sheathed at my lower back when a magical force suddenly jerked me forward, around the bend in the drive, and right into Helena. Only it wasn't her magic dragging me along. It was the red-headed witch with dark violet eyes, glaring at me. Heather stopped. Helena rushed to stand between us, breaking the spell. I steadied myself and started to draw the dagger. Helena whirled around on me. Wait. Everyone calm down, all right. I didn't lower my hand or look away from the witch. You're Heather. She scowled, her fingers twitching at her sides. In the flesh. And you're a hunter. Her face twisted in irritation for a long moment, until she faltered, staggering away, holding a hand to her forehead. Helena rushed to her side, preventing her from falling. I'm all right. What the hell is going on? I demanded. I don't know, Helena admitted, holding her sister up. She appeared a few seconds before you showed up. I don't think she's here to hurt me. I'm not, Heather whispered weakly, gripping her sister's arm tightly. Why are you here? I asked, removing my hand from the dagger but not relaxing. This could all be a trick to suck Helena into a trap. Because he's here, she replied. I have no choice but to go where he does. He's bound us together. He used, she choked on the next words and gave up trying to speak. Whatever he had done to her. He must not have wanted her to tell anyone. Who? I questioned, not about to believe anything she said, not yet. Logan Zephyr, she spat. I still. She grimaced. I see you know the name. Then, you should know exactly what he's capable of. Douglas. My eyes flicked to Helena, as a wave of deep-seated anger I had fought to keep at bay for years rose like a column of fire inside me. The second Helena sensed my rage, she flinched, and I willed the intense emotion down as far as it would go. 
On instinct, my hands curled into fists, and I counted to ten inside my head to keep myself in control. Douglas, Helena snapped. I blinked. Sorry. I know the Zephyr line. I know it well. How? They used to be witches, I explained briefly. Good witches who turned to the dark arts. Blood magic. Necromancy. They became obsessed with powers beyond their control, and their line became twisted. Studying my face closely, Helena's brow furrowed. Silently, I pleaded with her to let it go. She pursed her lips but turned to Heather. Where have you been all this time? Trying to break free of his hold. He kept me prisoner at his home in the mountains. There's so much you don't know. She winced, holding her head again. I don't have much time. You must tell everyone to make ready. He's not going to stop until he has me permanently bound to him. You have to find a way to stop him. I tried to warn you, but I was too late. I'm so sorry, Helena. She gasped and shoved her sister away. I've stayed too long. He's here, and he's going to. Her hand went to her throat. Her eyes widened as she gasped for air. I threw my hand out to break the invisible hold on her, but was immediately thrown off my feet by a furious gust of wind and snow. I hit the gravel with a grunt and sat up in time to see the faint, shadowy silhouette of a man in a robe with the hood pulled up. A pair of evil violet eyes shone from under it. A deep laugh resounded around us. The force of it slammed me back to the ground and tossed Helena into a nearby tree. Helena. I struggled to get up, but the weight was too much. I crawled across the rocks, straining to get to Helena. Her back was pressed to the trunk of the tree. I grabbed for her hand, aiming my other at the robed figure. A burst of white fire erupted from my palm, striking the man. He barely flinched. Come, my pet, a deep voice I would remember for the rest of my days said to Heather. We have work to do. Helena shouted for her sister. I held her back when she lunged forward. She fought me and cursed. I took every hit and yell, not about to let her get in the middle of Heather and who I knew without any doubt was Logan Zephyr. Logan released Heather, and with a scream she twisted and morphed into a massive black crow. It called loudly, taking off into the sky with a few pumps of its enormous wings. Logan gave us a sweeping bow, snapped his fingers, and was gone. I hauled Helena to her feet, and she broke free of my hold, racing to the spot where Logan had stood. Damn it, she shouted, spinning in circles, her gaze searching the trees around us. Wait, tracking spells. Norn said you're the best at them. Can you follow him? I hesitated, but her eyes begged me to try. Going to her side, I shut my eyes and held out my hands focusing on where Logan had stood. The trace of dark magic was strong and left a bitter taste in my mouth. It rose from the ground pressing against my palms. My hands shook and grew hot as if I held them over a fire, making me wince. I focused on the trail, waiting for a whisper of where Logan had set up shop. The heat turned to greater pain, and despite the freezing cold air, sweat broke out on my forehead. I was so close, so close to finding him. There. I followed the trace from the gravel drive and over the woods surrounding the Moonfall home. I had to find him. I had to figure out where he was and end him, not just for Helena and her sisters, but for what he did to my family and me all those years ago. The trail headed northeast, and just when I sensed I was getting close, I was yanked away from the spot, breaking the spell. Damn it, Douglas, Helena snapped, holding my wrists. Have you lost your mind? I had him, I muttered roughly. Why did you stop me? Her brow rose, and she nodded to my hands. You were smoking, you idiot. I wasn't sure what she meant until I glanced at my palms. The pain registered as I saw the blisters forming on my skin. Dragging me toward the house, Helena muttered something about stubborn pain in the ass men. As we walked, the temperature dropped even more, and the snow fell harder, blanketing the ground. I squinted through the harsh wind, barely able to make out the house through the heavy snowfall. I wrapped an arm around Helena's shoulders and drew her into my side to keep her as warm as possible. My legs grew stiff, and I faltered when we stumbled onto the front porch steps. 
Together, we navigated them, made it to the porch, and yanked the front door open. Helena slammed it and locked it behind us with a flick of her wrist. She tousled my hair, sending snowflakes flying every which way. She smiled, and I did the same, or tried to. When I recoiled at the throbbing pain from my hands, she turned and headed deeper into the house. I've got something in the kitchen for Burns, she called over her shoulder. Let's go. Need to get you patched up, and then you can talk. Holding my hands level helped ease some of the discomfort. I looked like a crazy person as I went through the house to the kitchen, but there was no one else to see me but Helena. She pointed to the kitchen table, and I sat, resting my hands palms up so she could examine them. Talk about what? I asked lightly. About how you know who the Zephyrs are. She opened several cabinets, took out two small brown bottles, and returned to the kitchen table with them and a washcloth. The first bottle she opened smelled sickly sweet. She placed the cloth over the opening, turned it upside down, then applied it to the burns on my hands. Shit! I yelped and flinched away. She caught my hand and kept on dabbing as I ground my teeth and fought back the urge to let another string of curses fly. What is that? Something I whipped up. Her brow crinkled, focused on my hand. Fairy dust mixed with, well, you probably don't want to know, actually. Cleans burns like a charm, though. I had to come up with something. I tend to be a wee bit clumsy mixing potions. Got tired of dealing with burns. She thoroughly washed my left palm and moved to the right. Once they were clean to her satisfaction, she opened the second bottle. I tensed, expecting this concoction to sting, but the dark green cream that came out soothed the burns. The last bit of pain disappeared as she coated my palms, and the faint smell of lavender and sage filled the room. Let that dry, then you can wash them off. She set both bottles aside, rested her chin on her hand. Talk. There's nothing to talk about. Really? I don't have to be an empath to tell you're pissed. Come on, Spill. How do you know them? She didn't look away, merely blinked at me as the silence stretched on. Douglas, you got dragged into the middle of my family drama. Nothing you say will faze me. It's not that, I whispered, old wounds opening no matter how hard I tried to keep them closed. Screams echoed through my memories, and I pushed back abruptly from the table, storming to the back door. I couldn't make out anything beyond the greenhouse windows, the snow was so heavy. Cold radiated off the glass door, brushing against my face as I fought against a tide of memories I told myself I'd never bring up again. A warm, soothing hand closed around my arm, and I jumped. I hadn't even heard Helena get up or come toward me. What happened? Jaw clenched, I turned and looked down at her seeking gaze. Logan Zephyr murdered my coven. Chapter 3 Helena even with the drapes pulled over the doors and the windows on the first floor, the kitchen was chilly. After Douglas's revelation, we'd moved to the living room and built a fire in the hearth. He hadn't said a word since, and I was trying to figure out how to ask without upsetting him more. His anger was a wild beast bashing at the fragile bars holding it back. A headache bloomed behind my eyes. I pinched my nose, willing it to go away. Helena. I'm fine, I assured him, lowering my hand and forcing a smile. We had mugs of hot chocolate. I draped a blanket over my shoulders to beat back the chill. The fire was helping, but the howling winds pounding the house reminded me we weren't safe, not by a long shot. This wasn't a typical blizzard. The longer it took for us to stop Logan, the worse it would get, I assumed. We should be digging through the spell books in the attic, but I couldn't get myself to move or speak. Douglas needed to be the one to start talking. For all I knew, something he might offer something about the Zephyrs would help us stop Logan. If nothing else, it would alleviate the grief and fury roiling around inside him. I think you're the most patient person I've ever met, he mused quietly, staring at the fire. I grew up with three sisters. I have to be. He laughed, but it turned bitter, and he scowled as he set his mug down. He stood, running his hand over the scruff at his cheeks and paced in front of the hearth. It was about ten years ago. I lived with my coven, 
in an all-magic community. Very small and close-knit. I was helping Vic when she and a few hunters were passing through Colorado, he explained, his gaze taking on a faraway look. She told us about a dark power they were hunting. Couldn't figure out if it was demonic or something else. We did what we could to help, then sent them on their way. His anger spiked. I winced as the pain in my head increased. If we'd known who they were tracking, we would have set up better warding. Maybe gone with them. Douglas rested his hands on the mantle, hanging his head. What happened? I asked, when he remained silent for a few minutes. A man showed up, Douglas replied, his voice more a growl. He claimed he was with Vic, but something was off about him. He removed his hat and I saw his eyes. Dark violet eyes swarming with evil. He snapped his fingers and I was thrown to the ground, pinned there by an invisible force. The alarm sounded, but it was too late. The man who attacked me crowed as he set our homes on fire. Douglas wasn't seeing the living room anymore, that much I could tell from the far-off look in his gaze. Every muscle tensed on his body, as if he were bracing for an attack. He continued, I had to lay there and listen as my family, my coven were burned alive one by one. I can still hear their screams most nights. See their faces. Logan was too strong, and I was helpless to fight back. My survival that night was random. I was the first one to greet him, so I got to live. Sick bastard. I went to Douglas, laying my hands on his shoulders. It's not your fault. Isn't it? I was one of the most powerful witches in our coven, and I couldn't stop him. I couldn't break through the spell he cast on me. He shook his head and tore away from me. When the last person fell, Logan finally released me from his hold. He reminded me death would come to any who helped the hunters stop the Zephyr line. Then he disappeared into the fog. He struggled to breathe and his gaze turned wild. Now he's back and all I want to do is track him down so I can rip his throat out, he seethed. And I'm terrified I won't be able to. That he's going to win, again and take away those I've come to care for. My new family. You're not alone in this fight, I reminded him. You've got Vic and Lincoln. You've got Norn. Hell, you have my sisters and me. I caught his hand, stopping his frenzied stalking around the living room. Douglas, look at me. His green gaze latched onto mine, and I had to fight back another wince of pain. He was barely holding on to his anger, that much was evident from the strain on his face, and the hand clenched tight at his side. We'll stop Logan, but, I paused, not sure how he was going to take what I was going to say next. But what? I licked my lips nervously. I don't think you should kill him. Douglas yanked his hand from mine and backed away like I'd lost it. He murdered my coven, Helena. All of them. He slaughtered them and made me watch. I understand your grief and your rage, but revenge isn't always the answer. Revenge is the only answer. What do you think I've been doing with the hunters for the last ten years? Just helping them deal with demons, he ranted. No, I've been watching and waiting and plotting to find this evil bastard and kill him. To make him feel the same agony he put me through long ago. And look what it's done to you. He stilled and his face went blank. What did you say? When we first met, you were putting on a mask of a laid-back hunter. Like you didn't have this dark past hanging over you. Twisting you from the inside out. I wrung my hands, sensing I was on dangerous ground. The last thing I wanted to see was Douglas falling apart, because of Logan. I took a deep breath, then went on. All of that was a front, to cover up how close you are to falling apart over emotions you've never dealt with. I face my inner demons, he argued. Have you really? I countered. You're going to stand there, look me in the eye and claim that you're not this close to losing it? I held my thumb and finger a fraction of an inch apart, as I said it. Go on say it. Say you're perfectly in control of your emotions. His eyes narrowed. Look who's talking. I bristled at his comment but didn't back down. We're talking about you right now. And we should be talking about you. I'm not the only one in this house who's not dealing with his emotions. Shit Helena, 
you don't even know what your emotions are. How is it you feel you get to lecture me when you're falling apart yourself? Tell me, have you ever actually dealt with the emotional fallout of losing Heather? Or Rena being possessed? Not like it compares at all to what I went. My hand moved without my realizing it, and the sound of the sharp slap echoed through the empty house. My fingers stung from the impact. Don't you dare stand there and tell me that what I went through is any less than what you did, I whispered furiously. I struggled to figure out if this anger was mine or his, but it was too overwhelming. It flooded me until it was all I felt. I raised my hand as if to hit him again. I know it's not the same. You lost your entire coven, Douglas. No one gets over that easily, but you do not have the right to stand there and lecture me on my own failures. I've done that enough these last few years." He blinked, his cheek bright red from my hit. He gritted his teeth but said nothing, which was probably for the best. I understand your desire for revenge, I do. But I'm warning you, the fallout from following through with your plan will tear you apart. You're telling me you don't want revenge for what he did to your family? I wanted to lie and say I didn't, but the words wouldn't come. Douglas crossed his arms, giving me a smug smile. You want to make him pay just as much as I do. We can make that happen. We can make him hurt. Do you hear yourself? I snapped. Plotting his death is going to turn you dark. It'll change your magic until it's not good anymore. Until it's dark and corrupted just as Logan's is. I am not him, he yelled. Really because you're starting to sound like the murderous, evil psychopath who trapped us all here in a freaking blizzard, I shouted right back. You're plotting to kill someone in cold blood. Not in cold blood, if it makes up for what he did. But it won't. I ran my hands through my hair, praying to the goddess for patience. If you take his life, you'll feel relief for a few days, maybe a few weeks. But you're a good person, a good witch, and eventually your actions will catch up to you. There will be consequences. In the end, Logan will win, even if he's dead. I tried to go to Douglas, but he backed away. I sighed and let my hands fall. Killing him won't bring back your coven. And I'm sorry, I'm so sorry about that. I wish there were a way to make it so it never happened, but there isn't. No spell can undo what's been done. Thanks for that, he muttered, and I was struck by his rage all over again. I staggered back, bumping into the couch as my head throbbed so badly it made me dizzy. My stomach somersaulted, and for a second I thought I was going to be sick. Damn it Helena, Douglas scolded, steadying me with a firm hand on my shoulder. I'm fine. No you're not and I just made it worse. He cursed some more and tried to guide me back to the couch. I shook my head, squaring my shoulders. You need to sit down. I'll go find the books. I said I'm fine, I yelled and immediately regretted it. I had to get away from Douglas for a while, at least until he calmed down. I was channeling his anger, and if I didn't put some distance between us, I'd do more than just slap him. I'll go find the books. So, you get to lecture me and look out for me, but I can't do the same for you. You can't help me. Drop it. No. I shut my eyes willing the swirling storm of chaos inside me to quiet long enough to think straight. Instead, it grew worse, until my skin was crawling and I felt like I was being torn into a million different pieces inside. I started for the stairs. Douglas grabbed hold of my elbow. He spun me around, and my annoyance mixed with his rage and everyone else's fear about being trapped in this town exploded. A burst of power shot from me and slammed Douglas against the wall, pinning him there. I glowered as the pressure inside my skull built. Back off, I warned. I can handle it. Douglas's brow arched. You sure about that? I tilted my head, studying him. His gaze shifted, and I followed it to find my right arm extended, my magic pinning him to the wall. The magic broke the second I tore my hand back. I stumbled to the stairs. What the hell was wrong with me? I didn't act like this. I never used my magic against anyone unless I was being attacked. A sharp spike of agony shot across my forehead, and I smashed my palm there, willing it to go away. 
I made it up a few stairs, tripped and fell back. My vision blurred, tears sprang to my eyes. The headache grew worse with each breath I took. Through the haze I sensed Douglas approaching. He reached for my hand but I drew back. I can't, I gasped. I need space. I just need some space. I'll be fine. Helena. I turned in on unsteady legs and climbed the rest of the stairs. Somehow, I made it to the attic and shut the door behind me. The insulation wasn't finished, and it was frigid up here. I slid down the door, hugging my knees to my chest as I breathed in deeply, then let it out, waiting for the dizziness to pass. Being away from Douglas helped, but it wasn't enough. I'd never been this out of control. I rested my head against the door, continuing to breathe and spinning the antique silver ring on my middle finger over and over. The simple motion helped soothe me and bring me back to myself, or as close to myself as I could get. Gradually I opened my eyes, and the last of the dizziness faded. Continuing to breathe slowly, I watched the ruby on the ring each time it twisted it around my finger. It had been in our family for generations, and most of the time its presence comforted me. Not today though. My fraying nerves were still on fire, and it was impossible to focus on only my own emotions. Douglas's anger slowly subsided but I sensed it all the same, pressing in around me. It wasn't his fault, none of this was. I should have been paying closer attention to how fragile my emotional walls had become. How was I supposed to do that? I'd spent so much of my time watching out for my sisters. They expected me to be the happy, bubbly, optimistic sister. The second I stopped being her, I'd let them down and we'd all fall apart. When the headache was merely an annoying throbbing, I hoisted myself up using the door and planted my hands on my hips. Right. The spell book, I muttered to the stacks on my right. Let's find you and get out of here before this damn blizzard gets any worse. Chapter 4 Douglas I stayed at the bottom of the stairs, debating if I should follow Helena or not. My back ached from being shoved into the wall, but I was more worried about the woman hiding in the attic than about what she'd done to me. My main concern was why she did it. Since the moment, Helena had always had a smile on her face. Aside from the few moments during the worst of Rena's ordeal, I hardly remembered seeing Helena angry or without the aforementioned smile. What I just witnessed, that was not Helena. Definitely, not the witch I thought I was getting to know. She was coming apart at the seams. Hadley's request to save Helena from herself came back to me as I turned from the stairs and made my way through the living room to the kitchen. She really thought I was here to help Helena find herself. How the hell was I supposed to help her when I was barely keeping my own shit together? Helena was a time bomb of pent-up emotion, waiting to go off. And I just made it worse, I muttered, scoffing at how much of an idiot I was. I should have told Hadley the truth about me. Maybe then she would have seen I wasn't the best option to help anyone, especially an empath. I shoved aside the heavy drapes at the back door, and glared at the snow. Logan was out there somewhere, and my revenge was finally close enough to taste. I imagined his demise, pausing when the visage of Helena's worried frown appeared unbidden in my mind's eye. If I killed Logan as viciously as he murdered my coven, what would that make me? He deserved to die slowly and painfully for his crimes. He deserved to rot in hell for the rest of eternity. I yanked the drapes closed and told myself I was making the right move by going after him. Helena couldn't understand. She never would, not really. She might feel what I do, but unless she'd lost everyone she cared for, that's all she would do. Feel my emotions. Not experience my despair. She'd never be as close as I was to ending it all when there was no hope left. Revenge had been what pulled me out of the darkness. I couldn't simply let it go now. I wouldn't. I tugged my phone from my pocket and called Norn at the shop. Hey. How's it going at the house, he said when he answered. Hope you're having better luck than we are here. None of Rena's spells turned up anything useful. It's probably the blizzard. Sure you noticed it's gotten worse. 
whatever magic Logan's using to drive it is disrupting whatever spells we cast. I ambled around the kitchen, willing myself to keep it together. Helen is upstairs looking for those spell books now. Hopefully she'll find something we can use. Ah, uh -huh, Norn replied. Douglas, you all right? Yep, yeah, fantastic, I grumbled. Why? You sound like I did a few weeks ago. Just a tough situation. I'm fine, really. Yeah, that's a bunch of horse shit, Norn uttered. Seriously, man, what's going on with you? Hadley mentioned something about you and Helena having a moment or something. This have to do with her. No. Really? I blew out a heavy breath and leaned against the kitchen counter, looking at the ceiling. It's complicated, all right. Let it go. Would you let it go if it were me, he shot back. This is different, and you know it, I yelled, regretting it the second I did. So much for not losing control. Douglas, what the hell is going on? You don't recognize the name. What name? Logan, I spat. His name is Logan Zephyr, Norn. He's the one who's doing all this shit. You're sure? I saw him. He's here. So is Heather. Wait, Rena suddenly came on the line. There was shuffling in the background, and it seemed Norn had put me on speakerphone. That was just great. Heather's here. You saw her. She came to warn you all about Logan, but said she was too late to stop him. I told them everything I could remember from our brief conversation with the fourth Moonfall sister, ending with Logan showing up and my trying to track him. I got burned by his warning. Finding him isn't going to be easy. Nothing with the Zephyr family ever is, Vic chimed in. Douglas, you sure you're all right with this? Maybe you should sit this fight out. No, I growled. I'm already here, so I might as well see it through. Don't take this away from me. Please. You are not to do anything reckless, understand. Vic ordered. And yes, that includes going after him on your own. If we're going to get him, it's going to be together. You are to stand down until we have a plan. If I have to use enchanted duct tape to keep you in a chair and lock you in a room, I'll do it. Don't push me on this. I ground my teeth, digging my fingers into the countertop. Douglas Dillon Denver, she said sharply. I rolled my eyes at the use of my full name, which she knew I hated. Do you understand me or not? Yes, I said through clenched teeth. Good. Now, I want you to help Helena find those books, and then you two hunker down at the house. No one's going out in this storm. If it is affecting magic, I don't want to risk any of you stepping in its path. We have no idea what it might do to your power. How's Helena doing? Rena asked. I mean, we haven't seen Heather in years. Is she holding up okay? Not exactly, I admitted. What do you mean? Hadley yelled, and I silently cursed. What happened? A lot happened, all right? Logan showed up, and then Heather and I lost it, and all that did was make her lose it. I messed up. I finished lamely, deflating instantly when I grasped what I did to Helena by letting Logan get to me. Are you hurt? Hadley asked. Me? No. Why would you ask that? Because Helena is a damned force to be reckoned with when she loses control. Hadley sighed. Maybe I shouldn't have sent you after her. Look, I know I messed up, but I can fix this. I can help her. Why was I even saying that? I had no idea if I could help her. All I'd probably end up doing was making the situation ten times worse than it already was. The thought of leaving Helena only made my aggravation worse. A horrible emptiness filled my chest, a void I hadn't felt since coming here. Helena's smile and laughter had filled it. Her mere presence held the darkness at bay. I couldn't leave her for both our sakes. You sure about that? Hadley challenged, startling me from my thoughts. I didn't have to see her face to feel her glare. If she keeps channeling your anger, on top of everything else, she's going to destroy everything in her path, and that includes you. 
I said I got it, I yelled. I took a deep breath and let it out. I've got everything under control. Trust me. Just find the spell books, Hadley's words cut off. I frowned. Hadley? Norm? I pulled my phone from my ear to see the call had dropped. I tried to get them back, but there was a busy tone. The lights in the house flickered several times then went dark. Perfect. I tossed my useless phone on the counter and shut my eyes. I pictured Logan's leering face and did what I'd been doing for the last ten years or trying to. I shoved every image of him and what happened that horrible night into a tiny little box in my mind. I locked it behind a mental wall of all the good that occurred despite him. After several minutes of focusing on my breathing and tamping down my rage, I opened my eyes. Back to work, I murmured. Helena. Just focus on Helena. The house was dark, so I started opening cabinets, searching for candles to give us more light. I found a few tall, blue ones in the kitchen, and a whole cabinet of partially melted ones in the living room. I scattered them around the kitchen, dining alcove, and the living room, hoping the sisters hadn't planned on using them for anything special. Once the last one was lit, I blew out the match and turned to face the stairs. Helena hadn't come down yet, and I didn't like leaving her alone upstairs, especially with the power out. That, and I needed to apologize for, well, everything. The climb to the attic was much harder than any walk I'd ever had to make. When I reached the closed attic door, my fist hovered inches away. I told myself to knock, but my hand refused to listen. Just as I planned to back away quietly and go downstairs, Helena called from behind the door. I can feel you standing there. You might as well come in. The lock clicked and the door swung inward. I walked in to find it just as dark as the rest of the house. The only bit of light came from a small orb of fire hovering over Helena's shoulder. I shivered at the sudden cold that hit me in the face and hurried to her side. Why are you still up here? It's freezing. Had to find the books, she muttered without looking at me. I think I did, actually. Great, let's take them downstairs by the fire where it's warm. Still telling me what to do, huh? I wasn't doing that before, I said, trying to keep my tone light. Right, sure you weren't. I reminded myself to keep it together and picked up the stack of books beside her. We can talk about this downstairs. Maybe I want to talk about it here. Why are you being difficult? Yep, totally me being the only difficult one. She stood with a glare, slamming two more books onto the stack I had in my arms. Not like there's someone else under this roof currently trying to drive me to crazy town. She made to move around me. I shuffled the books into one hand and took hold of her arm. What? I'm sorry, I said, and she still. I'm sorry for what I said downstairs, and I'm sorry I made you lose control. It should never have happened. She crossed her arms, but her gaze softened, and she hung her head. I'm sorry, too. And as much as I hate to say it, you're right. I've been so off lately, and then this shit happens, and you, and I'm a bit of a mess. Think you're allowed. The small orb of fire flickered, struggling to stay lit. She wrapped her arms around herself. Come on, let's get downstairs and warm up. I checked in with the others. The call cut out, though. I said as we left the cold attic behind and headed for the living room. I filled her in on most of my conversation with Norn and her sisters. I left out the orders from Vic, at least for the time being. I also left out what Hadley had said. How they take the news, she asked once we reached the living room. About Heather, I mean. I set the stack of old, leather-bound spell books on the coffee table. She sat cross-legged on the couch and dragged the blanket onto her lap. As well as expected, I guess. Think they were a bit surprised she was here to help, but they seemed optimistic. They were more interested in dealing with Logan. Helena reached for a book and rested it on her lap. I still can't believe she was trying to warn us this whole time. All those years, she was fighting to get away from him, and we just gave up on her. She made no move to open the book her gaze drifting to the flames crackling in the hearth. We should have tried to find her. 
You can't blame yourself. Can't I? It's like Hadley said. We knew Logan was bad news, but we let Heather be with him. By the time we realized what he was, it was too late. We lost our sister to that bastard and never tried to fight for her. From what I recall, you did talk to her. All of you did. She shook her head, but I removed the book from her lap and set it on the table. Gently, I turned her to face me and held her hands. Even if you did go after her, what would it have accomplished? You three probably would have ended up hurt. Or worse, trapped with your sister. I doubt she blames any of you for what she went through. And if she does, I don't know if I can take any more guilt right now. You shouldn't be holding on to any guilt as it is. She scoffed. Yeah, okay, says the man who's been carrying around the deaths of his entire coven for, what was it? Ten years? I let go of her hands, but then it was her taking mine back and scooting closer. Guess I really shouldn't be the one giving you lectures on how to deal with your emotions, I admitted. Or oh, maybe we can help each other. My interest peaked, I asked, how? She nibbled on her bottom lip, her nervous energy reaching out to me. Since Heather, I never really opened up to anyone. How could I when my sisters were going through the same thing and then Rena was possessed and I just never did? When was the last time you had a heart-to-heart -heart with anyone? An image of Norn holding a shotgun to his chin made me swallow hard. Not too long ago, actually, but that was more about someone else than me. I'm not going anywhere, she whispered and squeezed my hands. Anything you want to talk about? I'm not sure this is a good idea. The last time I mentioned it, things got a little heated. I glanced past her toward the front door where not too long ago, she had me pinned with her magic. I don't want to push you to that point again. Regret filled her eyes, and when she pulled away, I let her. I haven't acted out like that in years, she murmured, fiddling with the hem of the blanket. I used to be really good at keeping everyone else's emotions at bay, knowing what was just me. She laughed sadly, adding, I haven't been just me in so freaking long, I don't even know what it means anymore. Everyone just expects me to be happy, all the time. It's exhausting and, she clamped her mouth shut suddenly. And what? She shook her head and grabbed for one of the spell books. She flipped open the cover and turned the old crinkled pages. Lonely, she finally said. It's just lonely, but I'm scared to let anyone get too close. Because you don't know if what you're feeling is real, I filled in for her. She nodded, not looking at me. But it's fine. I can deal with it. Not a big deal. What we need to be doing is going through these books, right? She picked up a second one and tossed it onto my lap. Time for some reading. I sat back and with the light of the fire, started digging through the book for any sign of what Logan was plotting. The minutes turned to hours and it grew dark outside as night fell. The howling winds never died down, and the snow continued to fall in heavy white sheets so thick I couldn't make out the front garden gate anymore. We went through several rounds of hot chocolate, followed by hot tea to keep us awake and warm. The fire helped, and I cast several more floating orbs around the living room to block out the encroaching cold. The clock chimed one in the morning, and I jerked upright on the couch. Damn, I muttered, rubbing my eyes and wincing at the ache in my neck. We'd gone through almost every book Helena had brought from the attic, but none of them had anything resembling the spell Logan placed on melancholy. I yawned and removed the book from my lap. Helena was sound asleep at the other end of the couch, her feet tucked up under the blanket, her head resting on the armrest. Her lips moved and I shifted closer. Her forehead scrunched and her eyes darting wildly beneath the lids. When she twitched violently, I sank to my knees in front of her, gently taking hold of her shoulder. Helena, wake up! She stayed asleep, and whatever nightmare she was having seemed to grow worse. A whimper slipped past her lips and she mumbled, Leave me alone, over and over. Helena, it's just a dream, I assured her, giving her shoulder a hard shake. Wake up! Her head twitched, and the picture frames hanging on the walls rattled. The coffee table scooted toward the hearth, even the couch trembled. Whatever she saw in her nightmare 
was affecting her magic. Helena. I had hold of both shoulders now and sat her up. Come on, wake up, sweetheart. She screamed. I was thrown back with a thrust of her hand. I slammed into an end table, knocking it to the floor. Cursing and grimacing, I rose. Helena's eyes were wide open. Douglas. Her confused expression went from me to her hand. She rushed to help me up. Are you okay? I'm fine, just a few minor bruises. She started to back away, but I held her. Helena, look at me. When she refused, I cupped her face and lowered myself to her eye level. I'm fine, all right. No harm done. I should be asking if you're okay. Nightmare. Something like that. Seemed pretty intense. You want to talk about it? She shook her head, clenching her jaw. I'm here for you, just as you are for me, remember? Talk to me. Please. She slipped out of my hands and paced around the living room, frantically running her hands along her arms like she was trying to get warm but couldn't. When she faced me, a haunted, eerie expression filled her eyes. I was surrounded, she whispered, by my sisters, everyone in town, and they were in pain, so much pain. And I felt it. I felt their pain, their grief, their sadness. She shivered and sank onto the couch. Their desperation. I couldn't help them. I was being torn apart from the inside out, and my magic wouldn't work. She held out her hands, the haunted expression turning to horror. They were dying, and all I could do was watch. She choked on whatever she tried to say next, and held her face in her hands. You're right. I can't do this. I can't. Yes, you can. I went to her. Come on, I want you to try something. I pulled her away from the couch even while she shook her head. Just trust me. What are we doing? Proving that you can gain back control of your emotions. I sat on the rug by the hearth and motioned for her to do the same across from me. She looked uncertain but gave in. We sat cross-legged and I held out my hands for hers. It's something Vic taught me years ago after I joined the hunter ranks. How to sit cross-legged. Helena quipped with a smirk. I rolled my eyes inside. No, how to quiet your mind. How to ground yourself. I was a wreck when they found me after Logan killed my coven. I was all rage and pain. She worked with me for months until I was able to control those emotions. Her gaze turned skeptical. I'm not so sure it worked for you. In the beginning, it did. Lately, I've felt myself slipping, I'll admit it. Maybe some part of me knew I'd see Logan again, sooner rather than later. I ran my fingers over her knuckles and whispered, I never wanted you to have to deal with my shit on top of your own. I'm used to it. But you shouldn't be, I argued gently. Did no one ever teach you how to block out other people's emotions? No one else in our coven or family is, or was, an empath. And I did have a handle on it until I got serious with a guy. Then things became confusing, then Heather and well, you get it. Life happened, just not in ways I was ready to deal with. A hint of jealousy seeped into me, hearing she'd been close to another guy. That was immediately followed by anger, because I sensed he'd broken her heart. What matters right now is finding your center and holding on to it no matter what. I placed her hands, palms up on her knees. I covered them lightly with my own and told her to close her eyes. I want you to focus only on what you feel right now. Just you. Not me or anyone in town or your sisters. Only you. You make it sound so simple. And if you're this close, all I'm going to feel is you. Try, I urged. I bet it works. She chewed her bottom lip but gave in with a nod. Finally. Imagine everyone else as trees in a forest. You're moving past them and leaving them where they are. Helena chuckled. What's so amusing? Some people in town would make some really gnarly trees. Like Mindy. What a weird tree she'd make. I had no clue what she imagined, but I smiled and gave her hands a light tap. Focus. At the very center of the forest is an open field 
and in the middle of that is you. Just you. No one else is close enough to reach you. There's a fence with a gate. No one has the key but you. Inside that fence is what you feel, Helena, and only what you feel. Sparks of magic flickered between our hands as I guided her and gave her strength in case she needed it. I listened intently to her steady breathing. Her fingers twitched against mine, and I peeked open an eye. Hers were still closed, but her brow was furrowed. What do you feel? I asked, keeping my eyes open, and slowly withdrew my hands. She was silent for a few seconds, then took a deep breath in and let it out. Confusion, apprehension, fear, and want. Want for what? She shifted on the rug, but kept her eyes shut. To not be alone anymore. Anything else? Her cheeks reddened. She murmured, yeah, a lot actually, but that's just because you're sitting right here. Slowly, I stood and moved away as quietly as I could. Using my magic, I placed a barrier between myself and Helena. It would make it seem as if I were at the other end of town, as far away from her as I could get right then. How about now? I asked. She tilted her head. It's different, but I still feel attraction and desire, and you know, things. Things? Yeah, things. I'm not sure how else to describe them. Why don't you tell me? They're probably mostly your emotions anyway, she said, her tone teasing. Helena, open your eyes. She squeezed one eye open, then the other, still squinting almost theatrically. When she spotted me across the room, surrounded in a cocoon of my own magic, her lips parted, and she gazed at me, curiosity written on her face. How long have you been over there? Few minutes, I said, and let the barrier fall. So that was all me. All you need to do is find a way to create space inside you that's just for you. A space that only you can be in, I explained. That way, no matter what everyone else is feeling, you can go there in your mind and center yourself. And that's what Vic taught you, she asked, getting to her feet. You're not an empath. No, but it helps to keep certain emotions at bay too. Lock them away where they can't hurt anyone else. That's not exactly healthy, she argued, moving toward me. Maybe not, but it's better than running around feeling as if you're a nerve that's on fire. Or worrying you might hurt those you care about. Her mouth twisted to the side, and she shook her head. It seems almost too easy. It'll take practice. What you just did won't last more than an hour or so. But soon, with any luck, you won't have to sit down and go through the entire process of walking through the forest in your mind. You'll be able to make yourself appear behind the gate and remind yourself what you're feeling. You underestimate how strong you are. We both did, I admitted. You're not as powerless as you think. She stood right in front of me now. Just as she leaned in and I started to lower my head, the lights came back on and my phone rang. Damn the timing. She flinched and stepped back, murmuring I should see who was calling. She walked around, blowing out the few candles still burning as I picked up my phone from the coffee table. You have horrible timing, I muttered to Norn once I was in the kitchen. Why are you up this late? Probably the same reason as you. Can't sleep, Rena's doing some more research. Yeah, about the same here. Helena still pissed at you. Not for the moment. Nice to have power and phones back. Yeah, Norn said, but the storm hasn't let up at all. Not sure what game Logan's playing, but Vic wants you two staying at the house. We were able to make it to Glinda's for the night. We'll try to get to you guys in the morning. Keep me posted if anything happens. You do the same. You sound better, at least. I don't feel any better, I confessed. The short meditation session might have helped Helena, but it did nothing to soothe my anger. I was barely keeping a leash on it. If I just focused on the beautiful witch in the other room, I'd be all right. I simply had to keep thinking about Helena. Talk to you in the morning. I said to Norn and hung up. They're at Glinda's, I told her when I caught up with her living room. We should get some sleep too. I'll take the couch. She clasped her hands in front of her and nodded. Or you could stay with me in my room. 
I'm not sure I want to be alone right now. But I mean, if you want the couch, it's pretty comfy. You sure? Yeah. I've got this. Garden gate locked. No one else in there but me. Might as well test it out. I motioned to her to lead the way, and we headed upstairs to her room. She pulled back the blankets on her bed and climbed in. I waited for a second longer, debating if this was really a good idea or not. I took a spot beside her, and she tugged the blankets up around us. There was a good foot or so between our bodies, and I planned to keep it that way. Helena might be on the way to dealing with her emotions, but it would be slow going. I shifted a bit closer to the edge of the bed, shut my eyes, and prayed for a dreamless sleep. Chapter 5 Helena Something very solid and warm moved beneath my cheek. I frowned at the arms tightening around me, pulling me closer to what I realized now was a body. A firm, muscled body. In my bed. I opened my eyes and bit back a gasp of surprise. Douglas had his arms wrapped snugly around me in sleep, and I was curled against his chest. We sure as hell hadn't fallen asleep like this. When was the last time I was this close to a guy, physically? I waited to be bombarded by his emotions, overclouding my own, but the longer I stayed there comfortable in his arms, the more I felt nothing from him or anyone else for that matter. Had it really been that simple all this time? To imagine the forest and the field and the gate? I hadn't wanted to believe it last night, but the proof was right here. I felt no one else's emotions but my own. Douglas stirred beside me, hugging me to him as his eyes fluttered open. His brow crinkled when I reached up and held his scruffy cheek in my hand. His breathing increased, mirroring mine, and I felt his heart racing in his chest. The desire I remembered from last night was as strong as ever. I thought of our first two kisses and heat flooded my cheeks. I might not have many of these moments when I knew exactly what I was feeling was me. I wasn't about to waste a second of such clarity. Moving in his arms, I pulled myself closer and kissed him. It was just a soft brush of my lips on his. I started to pull back, but then his hands flattened against my back and he captured my mouth. I buried my hands in his messy hair, getting lost in his passion and the completeness he made me feel. He pulled me up so I laid atop him, and he languidly kissed me as if we weren't trapped in a snow globe. As if an evil asshole wasn't trying to kill us. The winds howled against the house, but I only cared about Douglas right then. That, and what I was feeling. Not him or anyone else. Just me. Or I was, until a hint of anger that was definitely not mine seeped past the gate in my mind. Damn, I whispered, stopping the kiss. Sorry? For what, he asked, smiling. I could start every morning like that. You could? He sat up and kissed me once more. Yeah, I think I could. I'll keep that in mind, I mused as I slipped from the toasty bed. Why did it have to be a blizzard? I complained as I hurried to my closet to find a sweatshirt and socks. Douglas climbed out after me, stretching his arms over his head, distracting me. His brow arched. I cleared my throat roughly. I'm ah, uh, I'm going to go make some coffee. I'll call the others, make sure they made it through the night too. I walked to the door, but Douglas tenderly tugged me back for one more kiss that had me standing on my toes and fisting my hands in his shirt. I considered staying up here a bit longer, but the same hint of anger grew, and I broke away with a quick smile. As I made my way to the kitchen, lips tingling, I did my best to guide myself through the forest to my garden gate and make sure it was locked. No matter how hard I thought about it, I couldn't seem to focus enough to get back there. You'll just have to make time to do it later, I told myself as I brewed coffee. When I'd first awakened, what I'd felt had been all me, I was sure of it. Somewhere during our little makeout session though, my emotions bled into what he was feeling, which meant I honestly had no idea what was him or me. Again. By the time Douglas joined me in the kitchen, my head hurt, and it wasn't just his anger and desire pressing in around me. Everyone's fears from the town crept in too. I was holding onto the kitchen counter when Douglas approached. I held up a hand to stop him. Just give me a second here, I told him. 
He stayed right where he was, shoving his hands in his pockets, watching me, a worried expression on his face. Guess it's not so simple, after all. He sighed. I knew it wouldn't be, but I could hope, right? I wanted so badly to throw myself in his arms and have him hold me. Or I thought I did. Damn it. That could be him, wanting it. I curled my hands tighter around the edge of the counter, willing myself to get a grip. I shut my eyes and recalled everything Douglas told me last night. Helena. Hold on, I said, squinting my eyes shut. In my forest. I heard him step closer and was ready to tell him to give me some space when glass shattered. I screamed in alarm as Douglas dragged me to his chest and covered me with his body while another window and yet another exploded in the kitchen. The glass in the back door shattered. Douglas cursed, pulling me through the house to the living room. Every single window blew out, letting snow gust in, swirling around us like a cyclone. I strained to see through the storm and thought for a second Heather was there. I rubbed my eyes, and when I opened them, she stood a few feet away in the living room with us, but her body flickered in and out of view like something was trying to pull her away. Her lips moved, but the howling wind stole away whatever she said. Abruptly she let out a piercing scream, clutching her head in her hands. She crumpled in a heap on the floor and disappeared behind a wall of snow. The storm centered around Douglas me, driving us apart. He grabbed my hand. I tried to hold on, but the snow surrounded me, blocking him from view. Helena. I was turned around and upside down, fighting against the winds. Just as quickly as the blizzard burst through the house, everything grew still. I crashed to the floor, only it wasn't the living room floor. It wasn't a floor at all. Grass? I pushed myself up and looked around. Panic set in. Trees. That's all I could see around me in every direction, freaking trees. I wasn't in the house anymore. I was in the woods. Brushing dirt from my hands, I took a few tentative steps forward and touched one of the trunks. The bark was rough, and it appeared solid enough, too solid for this to be a dream. Heather? I called for my sister. My voice echoed, but she didn't reply. Douglas? I waited and shouted a few more times but there was no answer. Great, this is just freaking great. An overcast sky peeked through the tree branches, and though there was no blizzard here, it was still cold. Wrapping my arms firmly around my body to keep in as much body heat as possible, I picked a random direction and wound my way around trees and shrubs, ducking under low-hanging branches and cursing when I bumped into prickly bushes. After walking for an eternity, the trees thinned out. I passed a few weird-shaped trees, their trunks twisted and gnarled. When I found one that was split into three sporadic trunks, I froze. During Douglas's exercise, that was the exact tree I'd imagined for Mindy, our resident paranoid crazy lady. Slowly, I spun around and studied the rest of the trees. Oh no. The forest wasn't a forest. At least, not a real one. I ran to the edge of the trees and found myself standing in a grassy field. Shaking my head, I spun around, reality sinking in. I was inside my own mind. This field, the forest, those trees, they were exactly as I'd imagined. In the center of the field stood a wrought iron fence with a gate swinging open. A light breeze rustled the tall grass. Beyond the gate was a freestanding ornate wooden door. Just a door. Alone. Not wanting to be here any longer than necessary, I rushed for it. I needed to get back to Douglas. I ran through the open gate and grabbed the door's handle. No matter how hard I pushed on it, the door remained locked. Damn it, I shouted, banging my fist on it. Douglas? He can't hear you. No one can. A burst of cold wind struck my back. I gasped at the sharp sting of it and whirled around to see a robed man standing at the gate, an amused smirk on his face. His violet eyes glimmered. Long black hair hung down his back, blending into the robe billowing around his body. An explosion of hatred and malevolent fury left a sour taste in my mouth and had my stomach twisting in knots. Logan, I muttered. Helena. So nice to finally meet you in the flesh, so to speak. What do you want, huh? What? He chuckled darkly. 
You expect me to tell you and ruin my fun? Please, we're not even to the best part of the game yet. Game? This isn't a game you asshole, I shouted at him. He snapped his fingers and my lips clamped shut. I strived to keep yelling, but my mouth wouldn't open. All you Moonfall sisters are the same. Stubborn pains in my ass. He tilted his head as he came closer. He reached up to trail his fingers down my cheek. I smacked his hand away. He caught my wrist, dragging me against his chest hard enough to knock the air from my lungs. I grunted, aiming a kick at his groin, but he twisted my arm behind my back forcing me to stop flailing. Beautiful, despite the good magic flowing through your veins. Douglas does not deserve you. He let me go. I tried to hit him with a bit of that good magic. I flicked my wrist but nothing happened. He spread his arms wide. You have no power here, I'm afraid. Now you're playing by my rules. Let's see how strong you truly are, Helena Moonfall. He snapped his fingers, and my mouth finally opened. Just let Heather go, I said. You don't have to do this. I'm afraid your sister has left me no choice. She can't be mine until she can no longer be yours. You don't love her. He stiffened, his eyes narrowing. I have loved her for years. She is mine. She is meant to be with me, and one day she will come to realize I have done all of this for her. Or she'll hate you and murder you in your sleep. He shrugged. Perhaps, but you won't be alive to see that. He glanced around the field, holding his hands behind his back, and strode through the blades of grass, whispering when it brushed against his legs. This is quite interesting, this forest you've made. Tell me, do you genuinely think it will work? It already has. And you can't keep me here forever. I don't plan to. I plan to let you keep you here, he replied with a wicked grin. So many people feeling so many wonderfully dreadful emotions. Tell me Helena, did you really think it'd be that easy to keep them all out? To forget what your ability has cost you? One by one people emerged from the trees, their faces familiar. The open garden gate swung in the breeze, and I ran to shut it. Logan snapped his fingers, and I skidded to a stop on the wrong side of the fence as more and more people appeared. They said nothing, walking through the grass, closing in on me until there was no way out. When the first wave of fear, despair and anguish struck me, it was like someone kicked me in the chest. I gasped. A second hit sent me to my knees. My vision blurred, and the hits kept coming, my harsh curses echoing around me. Logan appeared at my side. I spat at his feet, but he merely waved his hand toward the crowd of people. Interesting. If you can't handle them, how will you deal with what comes next? I dug my hands into the ground, searching for purchase as my body ached from the emotional bombardment. The crowd parted, and two new people emerged, their faces making my jaw drop. No, I whispered. I thought you'd like to see them again, Logan mused back at my side. He hauled me up with a hand at the nape of my neck and shoved me toward the two men. Tell me, Helena, don't you miss them? You could have been happy with either one if you'd been able to control your powers. If you hadn't been so weak. The moment Logan removed his hand, the rush of confusion, love and desire slammed into me, throwing me to the ground in a tidal wave of raw emotion. I clawed at the dirt, struggling to push to my knees but the weight of their presence was too heavy. What they wanted and felt warred with what I wanted and felt, until my emotions were drowned out completely. Marcus and Dean were the two men. I'd grown closest to Marcus during the months we dated. I'd even let myself believe he was the one, until I destroyed whatever relationship we might have had. Their faces loomed and I squinted at their dead eyes. I see dead eyes. This wasn't real. Logan was messing with my head. All I had to do was fight back. I was stronger than this. I knew I was. I shut my eyes on their faces. Their emotions continued to push and pull me in, every which way. I bit the inside of my cheek, throwing my head back with a yell louder than the voices inside my head. Something warm dripped from my nose but when I wiped at it, there was nothing there. Marcus and Dean took a step closer. I'd moved on from them a long time ago. I had something far better now, 
no matter how confusing and messed up it might be. When they took another step closer, I yelled again, shoving at their chests, and they vanished. That all you got, asshole? I shouted at Logan. His eye twitched and he turned and faced the trees. See for yourself. Emerging from the forest were my sisters, all of them. They marched toward me until I was surrounded. At first, I felt nothing and wondered if I had beaten Logan that easily. Together, they rested their hands on me. I screamed as fire coursed through my veins. The rush of misery from Heather competed with the resentment and hopelessness from Rena and the guilt from Hadley. I fell to my hands and knees but they came with me, never letting go. While their emotions assaulted me, their words filled my mind in a constant flow of negativity and darkness. You were supposed to be there for me, Heather whispered, easily slipping past my mental walls. You abandoned me. You gave up on me. You let me try to kill myself. How could you do that? Didn't you feel my pain? My fear? I shook my head at Rena's harsh words, telling myself it wasn't real. They weren't here. You failed me, Hadley murmured, her voice so filled with sorrow it cut into my heart like a dagger. You, of all of us, should have known Heather was in trouble. That Rena needed us. But you didn't. You were supposed to be here for us, Helena. How could you do this to us? How could you fail? I smashed my hands to my ears, but all that did was make the voices louder. I dug deep through my memories, past the voices, until I found a moment from a few nights ago. Rena Hadley and I had been at the kitchen table, talking and laughing. We were together as we hadn't been, as sisters, in so long. I focused on our love for each other, and what the three of us felt at that moment. A hint of sadness had overcome us, wishing Heather could have been there. I focused on that too, and the sensations built, forcing the voices from my head. One by one my sister's hands fell away, and I staggered unsteadily to my feet. My head spun, and I nearly fell over, but managed to keep my feet beneath me. Panting and heart beating hard against my ribs I bellowed, like I said that all you got? Logan studied me. Perhaps I have underestimated you. His lips stretched into a sneer. Or perhaps not. I saved the best for last. I wasn't sure how much longer I could remain on my feet. I glanced at the garden gate. It wasn't far. All I had to do was make a break for it and lock it. I tensed, making ready to sprint for the gate when the worst pain yet struck my back. I screamed at the tremendous inferno that set me on fire from the inside out. I staggered around to find Douglas glaring at me, his hands clenched into fists, chest heaving with each breath. Douglas, I whispered through the agony. I knew this wasn't him, it couldn't be. Tell me Helena, what do you feel now? I always wondered how much of a curse it must be to feel what everyone else feels and not truly know yourself, Logan mused as he circled us. Screw you, I rasped, cringing when the blaze intensified. I had to look to verify if I was actually covered in flames. Why not just let go? Logan went on. Lose yourself in them all. You know it'd be easier. I flipped him off, standing my ground. He laughed, crossing his arms. So stubborn. Give in, Helena. Let yourself go. Emotions are pointless anyway. All they do is make you weak. They'll be your downfall. I perked up at his words. That was his plan? Make me an emotionless shell of who I was? I had to admit, it was a damned good idea. Without any emotion, my magic wouldn't work well, if at all. I would be powerless in more ways than one. I'd never be happy again. Never be sad. I wouldn't know what love was, even if it was standing right in front of me. Which it was. It was crazy to think Douglas felt anything like that for me this soon, but we had a connection. I'd sensed it the first time he smiled at me when we spoke. The first time his hand brushed against mine. During our first kiss. It wasn't just physical attraction or heat of the moment. I knew deep down I cared for him. No, I more than I cared. Douglas was someone I could love. And it was damn time I stopped being scared of trusting myself, so I could let that love in and share it in return. I straightened and squared my shoulders, 
taking Douglas's anger in stride. As it continued to push against me, I remembered how amazing it had been to wake up with him that morning. The feeling of his arms around me even while he slept soothed my fraying mind. The kindness and understanding in those dark green eyes. Slowly, the wave of anger slowed as I pulled on my true emotions. You won't win, Logan warned. Give in, Helena. I ignored him, and the pain from Douglas's anger faded as the love inside me grew and expanded, filling me, until I couldn't hold it anymore. A burst of white magic erupted from inside me and struck Douglas. He disappeared, and the clearness of who I was and what I truly felt made magic swirl in my hands. Logan snarled and charged me. I flicked my wrist and he was pushed back. I did it again and again, not letting him get any closer. The gate. I had to get to the gate. Violet lightning crackled between Logan's hands. His gaze was fixed on me, ready to attack. I had one chance to get out of here, and I wasn't about to let him take it from me. I focused on my love for my sisters, for Douglas, for my friends, and everyone else in my life. Bright green sparks formed at my hands. Letting go of my fear, I shouted, unleashing the blast on Logan. My magic struck him in the chest. He flew into the trees. On unsteady feet, I raced for the garden gate. Logan's bellows followed me. I shut the gate, sealing it. I grabbed for the door handle and threw it open, stepped through and landed on the floor in the attic. The house was freezing. My teeth chattered. My toes and fingers were numb along with my face. Confused, I used the nearby wall to get to my feet, wincing at the stiffness in my limbs. Snow piled against the wall where the windows had blown in. Shit. How long have I been up here? I tried to yell for Douglas, but it took a few times before I could get any sound to come out that wasn't a croak. Douglas? I coughed harshly, wiping my hands down face. What the hell? I whispered, confused, looking at my blood-coated palms. A pained shout came from downstairs. I staggered to the attic door, cursing my numb and throbbing limbs. Douglas. I had to get to Douglas. If Logan had sought to trap me inside an emotional prison, my heart dropped to think of what torture he was putting Douglas through. Chapter 6 Douglas The snow blinded me. Helena's hand was torn from mine. I lunged forward, not about to lose her, when the snow vanished and I was falling onto a gravel road. Grunting from the impact, I jumped to my feet and froze. No, I whispered. No, no, this isn't happening. This isn't real. Every building and house looked exactly as it had ten years ago. Smoke curled from the chimneys of the log cabins. Tall cedars standing as silent guardians around my home bore a light dusting of fresh snow. Joyful laughter and talking surrounded me as familiar faces appeared like ghosts out of the fog. Home. I was home. I shut my eyes and told myself to snap out of it. I opened them again, nothing had changed. Nearby, a group of kids played tag. Down the road stood our coven elders, drinking beer and wine, making plans for the upcoming winter festival. I sprinted toward them, waving my arm over my head. Clara, I yelled, standing in front of the woman with long white hair. Clara, please, you need to leave. You all need to leave. She made no indication she saw or heard me. I reached for her shoulder, ready to drag them out of there one by one if I had to, but my hand passed right through her. No. Damn it, no. I wasn't planning on dealing with you, Logan said from behind me. But then, you just had to show up in town at the right time, and well, now we get to have some fun. Did you miss me? Enraged, I charged Logan. He blinked out of sight. You're so easy a target, he said, behind me again. Just as you were the night we attacked. Slowly I turned to glare him down, my lip twitching. I'd waited too long for this day, and now it was finally here. He wasn't getting away from me. Not this time. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to tear you apart. Logan smirked. Is that right? Tell me, will that change anything? It'll change everything, I seethed, rushing him. My fist connected with his face, but a burst of magic threw me backward. 
I winced from striking the rough gravel, flipped over, and was ready to charge him again when I spotted a second version of Logan and several robed figures behind him. A hand closed around my throat, cutting off my air. Present day, Logan lifted me up to my feet, forcing me to watch. The fire erupted around me. Screaming filled the night air. I yelled and fought to get free, but Logan's hold was too strong. And just like that night, I was too weak to get away. I was too weak to do anything to save those I love. So many lives lost, so many innocents, Logan whispered in my ear, and my lip curled in disgust. You failed your family then, Douglas. What makes you think you won't do the same again? You honestly believe you, of all people, can save Helena? Save any of them? His grip tightened around my throat. I clawed at his fingers. You can't have her, I rasped. I don't want her. I just want to steal her magic and watch her die, Logan said with a leer. I want to watch them all die. You know, I think I'll keep you alive long enough so you can witness my handiwork. As my home burned down around me for the second time, despair consumed me. I did fail my family that night. I hadn't been strong enough to unsave them. An image of Helena appeared in my mind. Her laugh whispered across my ear. It felt like her hand closed around mine. My despair turned into a white-hot rage. Logan would not get his hands on her. I threw my elbow back, catching Logan in the ribs. He released me with a grunt. I didn't give him time to recover. I decked him. He staggered away, violet lightning cracking to life in his hands. I ducked under his attack and sent back a burst of white flames. He dove to the right with a furious hiss and launched another torrent of lightning at me. I scrambled to avoid his strike and decided causing him pain with my magic was too damned easy. Red flooded my vision. I threw myself at him, pinning him to the ground. I buried my fists in his face, striking him, until blood spewed from his nose and mouth. His feeble attempts to throw me off were useless in the shadow of my anger. You killed them, I ranted, my knuckles cracked and bloody from the beating. You murdered them. All of them. You're going to pay for their deaths and agony. You sick bastard. I brought my fist down for another punch, but he caught it in his hand. A sliver of fear worked its way through the madness filling me as he twisted my wrist to the side. I cursed. Is that so? Abruptly, I was tossed aside. I landed on my back, so I was looking up at the night sky full of smoke. Logan grabbed me by my shirt and hoisted me off my feet. You will lose everything, he said with a sneer. And it will be all your fault. White fire coated my hands, my rage not even close to being quenched. I was ready to unleash it when Helena shouted my name. I glanced around, frantically searching for her, but she wasn't anywhere to be seen. She yelled again, but it was so faint I assumed I'd imagined it. I shut my eyes, straining to hear if she would say my name one more time, but there was only Logan's laughter. Preparing yourself for the end, he mused. I took a deep breath, and when I let it out, my eyes opened. Flames danced in my pupils, reflecting at me and Logan's. His sneer fell away, and he released me as I unleashed hell on him. He dodged my first attack, but there was no stopping the fire, not now. The heartache I spent ten years trying to ignore burst out of me, like a living being all its own. I released a blood-curdling yell erupted until my throat was raw, and still the fire streamed out of my hands. Logan threw his arms up, forming a shield of violet lightning. It crackled and sputtered as my fire attempted to break through and reach its target. A crack formed in the shield. Logan retreated until he was backed into the side of a burning house. The nightmarish scenery around me shimmered, giving way to the living room of Helena's house. Whatever magic transported us here must have begun to fail. Logan's shield shattered. He immediately tried to create a second one. I didn't give him a chance, grabbing him and slamming him back into the wall. My fire crept down my arms, aiming for my hands. I was more than ready to set him alight and watch him burn as he had done to my coven. Are you ready to die? I asked. Logan's eyes filled with terror. 
It only lasted a second until he threw his head back and laughed. He kept cackling madly, as if he weren't about to die a gruesome death. The houses around me flickered in and out of view again. Glimpses of the living room appeared in longer snippets. I blinked and shook my head. The air grew even colder, and the flames running up my arms hissed and sputtered, struggling to remain. Go on, Logan taunted. Kill me already. This isn't right, I whispered, my stomach churning. Nothing about what was in front of me was right. I wasn't in Colorado. I was in Helena's home. As for Logan, this wasn't really him. His violet gaze shifted to blue then back again. I scrunched my eyes shut. When I opened them, his face was twisted and contorted. Kill me, he urged. Do it. Do it. Do it. One last burst of fury had me drawing my fist back, encased in flames, ready to strike him down. Douglas, Helena whispered, and this time it sounded like she stood right beside me. Douglas, please, this isn't you. Look at me. See me. The ghost of her touch caressed my cheek. I frowned. Logan's face faded away and was replaced by Helena's. I was holding her to a wall in the living room. One of my hands on her shoulder, my other pulled back and aimed at her face. Horrified, I let my hand fall and stumbled away. Logan, I whispered roughly. He was here. So was my coven. He was killing them. Helena's brow furrowed as she muttered, That bastard. I knew he'd do that to you. The last bit of fire devouring my home disappeared as her living room came back into full view. We had never left the house. The windows were all blown open and snow billowed with a gusting wind. The sharp cold struck me, my fingers and face grew numb. Helena reached for me. I shook my head, backpedaling across the room. No, don't. She scowled, following me. I'm fine, all right. Teeth chattering, I started to nod until I spotted the blood on her face and shirt. There's blood. How can you be fine when there's blood? Did I do that to you? Had I hit her? By the gods and goddesses, if I hit her, I'd never forgive myself. No, you didn't. That's courtesy of Logan, she snapped, wiping at her nose. You need to take a few deep breaths and calm down, all right? He's not here. He just came to screw with us. Well, it worked. Douglas, seriously, I'm fine, she insisted. But you almost weren't. If I hadn't snapped out of it when I did. Point is, you did, she argued. We need to get out of here before he comes back. I don't think he expected us to break his spell so easily. Easily. I shouted. That wasn't easy. I could have killed you. But you didn't, she repeated. She opened her mouth, but no words came out. Instead, a strange look came over her face. Her eyes rolled back and she collapsed to the floor. Blood seeped from her nose as I rushed to get to her. I hadn't reached her when a wall of hard snow erupted between us, blocking my path. I smashed my fists against it, but it held. Helena. I kicked and punched at the wall. Nothing worked. Damn it. A large crow flew in through the living room window and landed beside Helena. Its sad violet eyes focused on me for a moment until it turned its attention to Helena. Heather, I called, but she didn't shift out of the crow form. I know you can hear me. Using her beak, Heather tugged at Helena's hand. I caught sight of Silver and watched as Heather removed the ring from Helena's middle finger. With the ring clutched in her beak, she spread her wings and soared out the same window she entered. The wall of snow fell. I dropped to my knees beside Helena, hoisting her onto my lap. Wake up, I murmured, shaking her gently. Open your eyes, Helena. Come on, look at me. She jerked and sat up so fast, she nearly clocked me in the face with her head. Blood dripped from her nose. She clung to my arm, relaxing against me. I'm really starting to hate him, she whispered. I agreed wholeheartedly. Maybe after today, Helena and everyone else would be on board with my giving Logan the death he deserved. Steps pounded on the front porch. I braced for another attack, 
but let out a breath of relief as Norn, Lincoln, and Vic came inside. The sisters and Edric were right behind them, varying looks of confusion and fear on their faces. Helena, Rena called, and her sisters took my place on the floor with her. What the hell happened to you guys? A lot, Helena muttered. A whole hell of a lot. Chapter 7 Helena I gazed at Douglas from across the room. He rested against the counter, arms crossed, eyes downcast. He hadn't moved an inch since we piled into the kitchen to relay the chaos Logan put us through. Rena and Norn had gone around the house, sweeping up the glass and boarding up the windows using her magic. Hadley had helped me clean the blood from my face at the kitchen sink. All the while Douglas had his eyes on me, but he hadn't said a word, not to me, not since my sisters hauled me out of his lap. His green eyes darkened, overflowing with guilt. They flicked to me, then away again. Helena, Hadley said, squeezing my hand. Right, sorry, I mumbled, forcing my attention back on her and the others, who were all attentively listening to me as I recalled the morning's events. After I broke out of whatever spell Logan placed on me, I came downstairs. Logan had done the same thing to Douglas. I helped snap him out of it, then I blacked out. Hadley shifted in her chair to face Douglas. And then... Heather showed up, he explained. The blizzard stopped me from getting to Helena. Heather stole her ring. Then she was gone, and it was over. I guess Logan got what he wanted. Absently, I tried to spin the ring that was no longer on my finger. I don't know why he'd want it. There's no magic in it. Vic asked. None that I know of. Just an old family heirloom. Our grandmother gave it to me when I was a teenager. Worn it every day since, but there was nothing overly special about it. Just a ruby. I curled my fingers into a fist and covered it with my other hand. What would he want with my ring? A strange look came over Hadley's face, her hand reaching up to touch a necklace that wasn't there. What if he's the reason my necklace was taken too, she mused. It was definitely not magical, Edric chimed in, resting his hands on her shoulders. No, but it meant something to you both, Douglas said, pushing off the counter, his brow furrowing just above his nose. And the ring, it was important too. Magical or not, those items held great personal value. Rena, he asked, spinning around to face her and Norn, has anything of yours gone missing? Another piece of jewelry, perhaps? Not that she's told me, Norn answered while Rena remained curiously silent. His eyes narrowed. He looked down at Rena, his brow arched. You're squirming. I'm not squirming, Rena argued even though she was doing just that. Really? She shot him an annoyed glare, crossing her arms. The dagger's missing. What dagger? I asked. Her brow rose and she tilted her head. Realization hit me. That dagger? Since when? Why didn't you say anything? Probably because I was happy it was gone, Rena stated. And I thought it was destroyed in the blast that threw us out the side of the house. Norn pulled her to his side, kissing the top of her head. She pouted. I'm sorry. I should have said something sooner. It wouldn't have mattered. Douglas assured her. We wouldn't have known what he was up to. We still don't, I pointed out, making his brow crinkle even more. Unless there's something you'd like to share with the rest of us. It makes sense now, he whispered. The items that were taken, the necklace, dagger, ring, they were stolen after a period of intense emotional upheaval. You said the fight to destroy the hex bag happened right before the necklace went missing, he said, nodding to Hadley. Then the dagger disappeared right after you fought off a demonic possession. And then your ring. His gaze slid to me. It was stolen right after you faced down your inner demons and beat them back. I'm not sure I'm following, Norn said. What does that have to do with non-magical items? They might not have started out with power, but now they hold a great deal. Douglas cursed, swiping a hand down his face. He let out a bitter laugh. I wondered if whatever Logan had forced him to watch was breaking him down. His eyes were haunted, full of grief and an anger that wasn't going to be contained for much longer. He continued, 
when an item you already have a connection to in one way or another is around such powerful and dark influences, it becomes imbued with those emotions with that power. It binds itself to the person, creates a magical bond. Invisible but strong. Unbreakable. I exchanged a horrified glance with Rena and Hadley. And now Logan has these items, I murmured. What's he going to do? Try to voodoo doll us or something? He shrugged. In a way. If he's using the spell I'm thinking of, it's old and very intricate magic. It's going to take time to prepare. And once it's finished, Rena asked, moving closer to Norn. Then what? I'm not entirely certain. I need to make some phone calls, figure out if what I'm thinking is even possible. Hopefully, I can reach a few witches who might know. What are you thinking? Hadley pushed, holding tight to Edric's hand. Douglas hesitated but said, if he's using the spell I'm thinking of, then he can use these items to steal your magic. And I don't mean only your magic individually. He can steal the magic from the entire Moonfall line. There would be nothing to keep him from destroying this town and taking Heather away from you for good. I wanted to tell him he was wrong, but the surety in his words stopped me from arguing. Rena shook her head, hands fisting at her sides as she stepped forward. We can't let this happen. Not after all the shit we've been through, I'm not going to let some slimy evil sorcerer steal our magic and our sister. Hadley stood and took hold of Rena's hand. We won't. I stood next to them. Right. Let's go kick some ass. Vic smirked. Never walked away from a fight. Won't stop now. Douglas start making phone calls. Once we have the details, we'll track this bastard down and stop him. Preferably without losing any lives in the process. Douglas picked up his phone off the kitchen counter. If I can even get through. Might take me a bit. He glanced around. I quietly told him he could use my room to make his calls. He mumbled thanks in reply, then hurried away. Norn and Lincoln went with him, the three hunters already talking about the best way to take down a sorcerer. I sank into my chair, holding my head. The adrenaline from earlier had finally worn off, and every inch of me ached. The cold kitchen table was soothing against my forehead. Chairs scraped across the floor next to me, and when I glanced up I found my sisters and Vic at the table. Spill, Rena said, poking me in the shoulder. Spill what? You know what? You and Douglas were here all night. Alone. I shrugged, not bothering to sit up to respond to Rena's prying. Nothing happened. We did some research, got in an argument or two. You know, the usual. Fell asleep in my bed together, I added quietly, hoping none of them heard it. Hadley laughed. I knew sending him after you would be a good idea. I sat up in a hurry. What do you mean? What? I saw you two kissing the other night. Some sparks are flying there, don't deny it. You're telling me you two simply fell asleep together? We did. Mostly. My sister smirked. Vic chuckled. I scowled at them. It's not what you think, and besides, I have a feeling whatever might have been happening between us just came to a total standstill. Why? Hadley asked. I mulled over the answer in my head, deciding the truth was best. We might not have given you guys all the gritty little details about this morning. Meaning what? Rena asked, her eyes narrowing. I told them just enough earlier to let them know the gist of what occurred. But if I was going to explain what I saw in Douglas's eyes when I found him in the living room, then I needed to tell them what I saw and felt too. No more secrets. No more keeping information from each other. That hadn't worked out well for any of us lately, anyway. I launched into a rambling explanation of what Douglas and I argued about last night, followed by the technique he tried to teach me to help recenter my emotions and my mind. Once I started talking, it was like the dam ruptured, and I didn't stop until I reached the part where Douglas threw me into the wall and nearly decked me until I helped him break free of Logan's hold. The words trailed off, and I sucked in a deep breath, let it out, and smiled. That's why, I finished lamely. 
Why didn't you tell us you were going through all that? Hadley demanded. I gave her a blank look. Why do you think? That's it. From now on no secrets between any of us, Rena said, flattening her hands on the table. Deal? Hadley and I nodded. Deal, we repeated. So, Vic said, Douglas is scared to be near you now, is that what you're telling me? He thinks he hurt me, but he didn't. I don't think he would have, even if I hadn't been able to break him out of his own personal mental hell. He doesn't seem to agree with me, though. He'll hardly look at me now. I picked at a splinter on the edge of the table. He said you were with him after his coven was murdered. Was he really that bad? Vic folded her hands, nodding. It took him a week to speak after we found him, she said quietly, her words filled with grief. Every day was a struggle for him. His heartache and sorrow turned to bitterness and anger over time. When he started hunting, he was like a beast. We'd set him loose, and he'd tear the enemy apart. It took a few years for him to get his anger under control. But after what you just told me, I guess all he did was bury it. He's not ready to face Logan. All he wants is revenge, and his rage will consume him in the end. He'll lose himself. Just like I almost did. Vic stood, came around the table, and laid her hand on my arm. Then I'm thankful he has you. What do you mean? He talks to you, Helena. I don't think you understand how long and how hard I fought to get Douglas to tell me anything about himself. About what he was going through. He's been lying to me all these years. I knew it, but there was nothing I could do to make him open up to me. Then you come along, and there's just something about you that's able to reach him. He seemed fine when we first met, I said. He puts on a believable front, as do you apparently. She winked and headed for the door. I'm going to check in with the guys, see if they've found out anything yet. I suggest we stay together from now on, agreed. We nodded and watched her walk away. Rena and Hadley started talking about Logan and Heather, wondering where he was holed up, and just how powerful he was. I half listened, too occupied with the hunter upstairs and if I would be able to save him from himself. Chapter 8 Helena Another night came and went. Vic and Lincoln crashed in the living room while Douglas joined them. He still hadn't spoken to me directly. He talked to us all after several hours of being on the phone with witches and hunters across the globe, seeking out answers to his questions. From what he found, the spell Logan was trying to cast would indeed steal away the magic from the Moonfall line. We had four, maybe five days at most, to figure out where he was and stop him. Otherwise, it'd be bye-bye magic for good. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I made a pot of coffee once I reached the kitchen. I hadn't exactly slept, and more or less passed out from exhaustion around two in the morning. Now that I was back to being centered, it was easier to tune out everyone else's emotions. I had, all except for Douglas's. His were harder to block, and there was so much rage waiting for a chance to explode. I was determined to talk to him today, or to get him to tell Vic or Norn what he was going through. If he kept bottling it up, he would be no use to us in a fight against Logan. Hadley and Edric were heading into town today with Vic and Lincoln to check in with Sheriff Bernie and Mayor Dillwood. We didn't exactly have good news, but at least there was news. I peeked into the living room while the coffee brewed. I frowned. Douglas had been passed out in the armchair a few minutes ago. Now he was gone. Great, I mumbled to myself as Norn and Rena came downstairs. Seeing Rena so happy, and feeling their love wash over me brought a smile to my face. What are you grinning about? Rena asked, linking her arm around mine while we went to the kitchen. You too. Makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Rena frowned. You talked to Douglas yet? What do you think? The second I came down here, he darted upstairs. Can you blame him? Norn asked, pulling coffee mugs from the cabinet and lining them up on the counter. He could have seriously hurt you, Helena. He's not going to let that go easily. I think it's more than that, 
I said, glancing toward the ceiling when I heard the old pipes groan as the shower turned on. He's not okay. Not even close. Norn breathed out heavily through his nose. I know. I mean, I didn't see it before but I do now. So, what am I supposed to do, huh? Don't let him hide for one, Norn instructed. The more he's by himself, the more the memories and the emotions will torment him. Rip him apart. I watched my brother die, and I lost the will to live. He witnessed his entire coven murdered in a single night. That grief and anger won't ever simply go away. He wants to kill Logan, I whispered. He's been plotting revenge for years. If he does take down the bastard, he'll be giving in to all that negativity and darkness. It'll fester inside him, corrupt his magic. Then you need to stop him from doing that. How? I snapped at Norn. Quickly, I uttered an apology. I get it, he said shrugging. We can all be stubborn pain in the asses. Rena laughed. Tell me about it. He's going to keep his distance from you, as much as he can. He'll push you away, Norn told me. He's scared he's going to hurt you in the process of taking down Logan. But he wouldn't, I insisted. I know that. You have to show him, make him see you're not giving up on him. Norn smiled sweetly down at Rena as she hugged him. You two might not share a past life, but you mean something to him and vice versa. Don't let him destroy his chance at happiness because of Logan. Don't let him destroy himself. I squared my shoulders, nodding. Right you're right. No more hiding. He needs a swift kick in the ass, and I'm the one who's going to give it to him. Two can play the lecture game. If you'll excuse me, I said over my shoulder, hurried out of the kitchen and headed upstairs to the bathroom. I raised my hand to knock. Just as my knuckles were about to hit the wood, I stopped. If I knocked, Douglas would tell me to go away. If I waited for him in the hall, he'd find a way around me. Smirking I tried the door and found it unlocked. Quietly, I opened it. The bathroom was full of steam from the hot water coming out of the shower. I stepped inside, closed the door and hopped up on the vanity. Through the curtain, I tilted my head, watching his silhouette as he ran his hands through his hair. The water turned off a few seconds later, and an arm reached out around the curtain for a fresh towel off the shelf. My heart raced as the curtain drew back, and Douglas stepped out of the tub, the towel wrapped around his hips, wet hair a mess, drops of water sliding down his naked chest. He tensed. I lifted my eyes to find his gaze boring into me. Helena, he muttered roughly. What are you doing here? What's it look like? I'm cornering you so you can't keep running away from me, not until we talk. There's nothing to talk about. He stormed toward the door. With a flick of my wrist, the lock clicked. I whispered a quick spell, warding the door. When Douglas was within a few inches of it, the magic repelled him, sending him backward. Seriously? Open the door, Helena. No. I slid off the counter. I'm not leaving until we talk. His jaw clenched, and for every step I made toward him, he took another back, keeping space between us. Please, I can't do this right now. Then when? I feel your pain, remember? I feel everything you do. Which is why you should know to stay away from me, all right? Just leave me alone. Please. It'll be better for us. No, it'll be easier. Not better. I backed him into the wall, and when he tried to make a move around me, I threw out my arms barricading him. Not really. I knew he could overpower me if he wanted to, but he froze as if scared to touch me. You won't hurt me, I whispered. Douglas, look at me please. His lips thinned as he pointedly stared at the ceiling. You don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm not asking you to do anything. Really, he shouted, and finally those haunted eyes fell to me. You being in this room alone with me is asking me something. You're scared, I murmured, letting my guard down to embrace every emotion he was experiencing. I cupped his cheek and he flinched. I didn't pull away, though. I pressed my hand firmly against his skin. You didn't hurt me, I reminded him sternly. And you never will. 
I trust you with my life, Douglas. I trust you. When I rested my other hand on his chest, feeling the quick beating of his heart, his brow furrowed. I'm going to be here for you, no matter how hard you try to push me away. You asked me about the first kiss we shared and what I wanted. He swallowed hard but didn't speak. I'm saying I need you, and I'm pretty damn sure you need me. Don't block me out. Covering my hand on his chest with his, he tilted his head studying me. There's too much anger, he whispered, the words harsh with his ragged breathing. What if next time I can't stop myself? What if? I moved my hand, covering his mouth. Don't start with the what ifs. They're pointless, and you know it. Neither one of us can win this fight alone. I shifted until our bodies were pressed together, and there was no more room for him to run. You helped me refocus and find my true emotions. You're the reason I was able to break free of Logan's hold. Now it's my turn to help you, so let me help you. His gaze became fixed on mine, and ever so slowly I sensed his walls coming down. Emotionally, I braced myself for what I was about to feel. He must have seen me tense because he tried to stop. No. Don't hold back. I can take it now. I won't lose myself. He cringed like he was going to regret doing this, but I shut my eyes, and bit by bit, Douglas let me know exactly what he was feeling, every horrible and pained emotion. They crashed against me like the waves on the shore, and I let them flow right on by. When they tried to linger and cling to me, I focused on what I felt for Douglas. I concentrated on the ties that bound us together, and had since the moment we met. Buried beneath the anger was an intense presence of love. The force of it caught me off guard, and I swayed on my feet. Douglas was right there to steady me. Helena. I'm all right, I promised. How could he not feel what else was inside him? If he could, he'd have a way to keep the rage at bay. Not bottled up but have balance back in his life. I wasn't entirely sure of what I was doing, but he needed to feel as I did right then. Tears pricked my eyes as his love reached out and intertwined with mine. I gasped, and then his arms were around me, holding me upright. Stop, he urged me. Helena, open your eyes. Not yet, I whispered. Not yet. A comforting warmth started at my core, and spread until every inch of me pulsed with the love that had grown so quickly between us. I imagined that warmth, flowing out of my hands and back into him. Your hands, he said worriedly, they're glowing. What, he gasped. I opened my eyes. My hands on his chest still were glowing a deep blue-green color. They pulsed with each beat of my heart, spreading across his chest in a swirling pattern like a river. The lines curved around his shoulders and his ribs, down his arms and legs and up his neck. It was the most beautiful light I'd ever seen. As it reached his eyes the dark green gave a subtle glow. His lips twitched and stretched into a grin. What is this? That, I said, hardly able to keep standing from the rush of power flowing between our bodies, is us. What we are and can be together. Like I said, I need you and you need me. My knees buckled. I fell against his chest. Douglas picked up and carried me to the vanity, where he sat me down. He held my face in his hands, shaking his head. You are far more powerful than all of them. You know that? It's a gift, I teased. Douglas, I... He cut my words off with a kiss, a soft caress of his lips. I sighed. He wrapped me in his arms, crushing me to him. I held him close, letting the raw and honest emotions flow between us until that was all I felt. I ran my hands down the smooth planes of his back. My nerves were on fire with every touch of his fingers against my back. I nipped his lip playfully. He deepened the kiss until I was dizzy. This man was who I'd been looking for all these years. Now that I had him, I sure as hell wasn't going to let anyone steal him away from me. Chapter 9 Douglas Helena's hand was secure in mine as we sat on the couch listening to Hadley and Edric's report from the sheriff and the mayor. I was still reeling from what Helena let me feel upstairs. Every time she shifted on the couch, I moved with her. We were entirely in sync now, and the loneliness I thought would always be a part of me was gone, as if it never existed. 
A few weeks ago, if anyone had asked me about my future, I would have said I was going to be working with the hunters till the day I died. No love. No family. It wasn't in the cards for me. How wrong I had been. Seems like they have it under control, Vic said, drawing my attention back to the conversation. Except for that Mindy lady. She's a piece of work. I might have given her something to help quiet her down so she'd stop freaking everybody out, Hadley admitted with a chuckle. Sleeping potion. Should knock her out for a day. Or several. Rena and Helena laughed with their sister as Edric rolled his eyes. Really? What? Maybe it'll cure her paranoia. Then the townspeople are in good hands for the moment, Vic said smirking. That leaves tracking down Logan before he has a chance to go through with this ritual. I said, finding him is going to be dangerous for whoever casts the spell. Since I'm the one who did it the first time though, I should be the one who does it again. I already have a connection to him, too. It'll strengthen the magic. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan until your face gets burned instead of your hands. Helena tugged her hand from mine, or tried to, but I held onto it. She scowled, and I simply smiled right back. I don't want you doing the tracking spell. It sure as hell isn't going to be you, I argued. Why not? I already proved I could handle him once. That wasn't really him, and you know it. That was some messed up trick he played inside your mind, I said, poking her forehead gently. I need to do this. Which is why you shouldn't be doing it. Helena. Don't take that tone with me, she said. Any interaction with Logan, before you're ready to face him, will only make it worse for you. And what makes you think it won't be a trap? What if you cast the spell to track him, and he throws you into another hellish memory? Or worse, he takes you, and I lose you. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And you can guarantee that, can you? She stared me down, waiting for an answer. You know I can't. Exactly. Which is why you won't be doing the tracking. I will. I was on my feet in a shot. The hell you are. You expect me to just stand aside while you risk your life. You don't know what he's capable of. I know enough, and as I said, I can handle him. Not happening, you hear me. You are not going to throw yourself in the line of fire for me. She glared at me, hands on her hips. Oh, but it's fine for you to do it? She jabbed a finger into my the chest, eyes narrowing. My life is no more valuable than yours, Douglas Dillon Denver, so don't you stand there and throw some macho crap at me. I'm a moonfall witch, and no one messes with my town. She's right, Rena said when I opened my mouth to keep arguing. She had rose to her feet, Hadley with her, and they went to flank their sister. This is our town. Our people to protect. We know what he did to you, Douglas, but he has our sister. It was personal the day he stole her from us, but coming here. Threatening innocence right in front of us. We'll be the ones to track him down. Together. The sisters held each other's hands. I glanced around the room and it was apparent I wasn't the only one not thrilled with their declaration. Norn's face was dangerously blank, and Edric looked torn. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have some work to do, Helena announced. She passed me on her way upstairs, and I caught her hand. She smiled, stood on her toes, and kissed my cheek. We'll be fine, okay? Logan won't know what hit him once we work our magic. The sisters disappeared upstairs, leaving Edric, Norn, and me looking at each other like we'd all been slapped. Vic whistled, making it to her feet. She clapped me on the shoulder with a laugh. I don't see what's so funny, Norn snapped. The looks on your faces. You're going to go along with this? I asked sharply. Why not? Helena has a point. Logan will be expecting you to track him again, to give in to your rage after what he did to you. The sisters doing the spell might be our only chance to catch him off guard. She sighed, eyeing us each in turn. Listen, I understand that this is hard for you to accept, but the women you love aren't the kind to sit on the sidelines and let you take all the risks. I assumed you knew that. We do, 
Lorne whispered, running a hand over his head. I should have seen this coming. We all should have, Edric muttered, sinking into an armchair. So, what do we do? You let them do what they were born to do, Vic argued. Lincoln, you and I have some more phone calls to make. In case this plan goes south, we need to ensure our people are in place to stop Logan from escaping. They exited the living room and went through to the kitchen. I heard the back door open and close as they went to the greenhouse. There was no if the plan went sideways. It was only a matter of when. We can't let them cast the tracking spell, I stated. And what do you want us to do? You're the only one who's a witch, and something tells me your magic won't be enough to stop the three of them, Edric said worriedly. Aside from knocking them out and keeping them that way until we find Logan, I don't see a lot of options here. Norn smirked. You want to deal with the fallout of us stopping them? I don't know about you two, but Rena could kick my ass in a heartbeat. He eyed the stairs then mumbled, don't tell her I said that. I paced around the living room, waiting for an idea to pop into my head. The more I paced, the more logic started to win out, and I gave up, falling into the other chair. Holding my face in my hands, I shook my head, seeing just how wrong this could go. I wasn't ready to lose Helena, especially if it ended up being at Logan's hands. After an hour of the three of us sitting in the living room, nothing came to mind. No brilliant ideas, nothing. I said I was going to turn in for the night and headed upstairs to Helena's bedroom to wait for her. I laid on the bed, eyes fixed on the ceiling, wondering what she and her sisters were planning. I should have been up there with them. Hell, I should have been the one finding Logan. I shut my eyes, but all I saw was Helena's face etched in agony, her body burned from the backlash of the spell. My eyes shot open, and I sat up, pressing my back to the headboard, determined to stay awake until she came to bed. No matter how long it took, I would find a way to talk her out of this foolish plan. I would not risk her life, not for that monster. Chapter 10 Douglas Helena's voice came from far away. Darkness surrounded me as I ran, straining to find her amongst the shadows. Her scream came from all directions at once. I yelled for her, spun around. The shadows parted. A hunched figure sat on the ground, shoulders shaking. Helena, I whispered and sprinted to her side. I grabbed her shoulder, but when she spun around to face me, her face contorted into a malicious smile. Her once brilliant blue eyes had gone dark. No, I said, shaking my head. No. What did he do to you? She cackled as she stood held out her hands, hands that were marred with burned scars. You did this to me, she seethed. You failed, Douglas. You will always fail. I backed away, a small part of me screaming that this wasn't real. It couldn't be. So much for love, she spat. The shadows burst into flames. They lashed out at me, grabbing hold of my arms and legs, pinning me in place. More screams came from the depths of the fire. I twisted my head around to find I was back to that horrifying night, watching my coven die all over again. I yelled and cursed to get free, but the fire bit at my skin, burning me alive. Helena stood, her head thrown back with glee as she watched the flames devour me. Douglas. I shot up off the bed and right into Helena. Breathing ragged, I glanced wildly around the room. Nightmare, I gasped, my head falling to her shoulder. Damn nightmare. I know, she soothed, holding me close. I sensed your fear. A shiver rushed down my back, and I drew her into my arms, needing to have her as close as possible to ground me. Her eyes were blue and filled with worry. Douglas. There were no words to tell her exactly how I felt, so I didn't even try. Instead, I moved her hand to my chest and let her understand that way. She shut her eyes, and barely a heartbeat later, crushed her mouth to mine, kissing me until we fell back to the bed in a tangle of limbs, desperation, and love. My fear of losing Helena was chased away by her lips on mine. Nothing else outside this room mattered except listening to her breathe and feeling the steady beating of her heart. Never in my life did I think I would feel so strongly, so deeply for another person. 
yet here she was in my arms telling me without words she would never leave my side. That she would be here for me, no matter what came our way. That she would die for me, just as I would die for her. The last remnants of my nightmare faded. Moonlight broke through the storm clouds, falling across the bed as we burrowed beneath the covers. I kissed Helena's temple. She draped herself over my chest, a sleepy grin across her lips. This almost doesn't feel real. No. She nudged me with an elbow. How about now? I grunted. You know what I mean, I said with a laugh, tickling her sides. She giggled, and I rolled us over, nuzzling her neck. I keep waiting for you to disappear on me. Hate to tell you, but I think you're stuck with me for a very long time. Holding myself up on my elbows, my eyes narrowed. You swear it? Swear to be with me forever. She started to nod, then stopped. You're not talking me out of the plan. Helena. She grabbed hold of me and rolled us over so she was on top. You need to trust me, she insisted. You told me earlier, you underestimated how strong I am. And. And I think Logan did too. He's had your sister for years, I reminded her. He could be simply trying to lure you all in. Make you think you have the upper hand. Or he's not as powerful as he thinks. She leaned down to kiss me, but I pressed my fingers to her lips. Pouting, she mumbled, really? You're going to withhold kisses now. I scowled, sitting up and kept her on my lap. How do you expect me to be okay with this plan? With any of it? He's not just a bad guy. He's evil, and evil doesn't show mercy. Evil doesn't take prisoners. It destroys everything in its path. I lifted her chin and pressed my lips to hers, soaking in her warmth. I can't lose you. You get that right. If anything happens to you, I won't make it, not this time. She hugged me, whispering, and you think I'll survive if I lose you? Let me find him. Let me help you end the torment he's put you through. Let me help you get closure. I held her tightly, hating I'd put this burden on her shoulders. I was supposed to be the one saving her, and here she was, risking everything to save my ass. You find him and that's all, I said sternly. He's mine after that. I know he stole your sister, but his life is mine. Douglas, she murmured. I shook my head as she leaned back. Her eyes searched mine, her brow wrinkling with worry. I can handle it, I assured her. I have to be the one to end him. She simply sat in my arms for a long minute, until finally she nodded. You know what spell you're using to find him. Her lips twisted to the side, and I wondered what she and her sisters talked about in the attic. I was pretty sure it wasn't just the tracking spell. I opened my mouth to ask when she said, we found one that should work. Modified it to make it as safe as possible from backlash. The ingredients will take two days to brew, then we'll be good to go. If I think it's not going to work and tell you to stop, you will. She rolled her eyes. You're overreacting. Am I really? She opened her mouth but stopped and twisted her lips to the side. We've got this. And if things get out of hand, we'll stop. I raised my brow. Which is honor. Chapter 11 Helena If you're going to stare at me like that, you might as well go wait somewhere else, I told Douglas as I stirred the potion. The large cauldron was set up in the kitchen at the shop. I threw a look over my shoulder at him. He stood in the doorway, arms crossed and face set in what I was certain would be a permanent scowl soon enough. We've been through this, and nothing you say is going to change our plan. Thank the goddess, I hadn't told him the rest of the plan. He probably would have trapped me in a room somewhere already, so he could hunt down Logan on his own. I didn't say anything. You didn't have to. I stirred the dark blue potion, currently filling the kitchen with the strong smell of the ocean. The potion we came up with was water-based and drew on the natural power hidden beneath melancholy. That power, of course, came from the ocean pounding the shorelines. I tapped the spoon on the edge of the cauldron, set it aside and spun around to face Douglas. We're going to be fine. You need to relax. 
Relax? You want me to relax? I want you to trust me. A tiny voice in the back of my mind said, I should tell him the full extent of our plan and not spring it on him at the last second, but I held back. He couldn't know until it was too late to turn back. This isn't about not trusting you, he argued, adjusting his arms as his scowl deepened. This is about not trusting Logan. Big difference. I went to him and ran my fingers down his cheek until his gaze found mine. He hadn't slept at all the last two nights. Each time he closed his eyes, his fear and anger warred with each other until he'd bolt upright, sweat covering his brow. The nightmares tormented him when he tried to sleep, and even when he wasn't. I couldn't count the number of times I caught the faraway look in his eyes, causing his fury to spike without warning. Each time he told me he saw the same thing. His coven burning, and Logan laughing at his failure. I tried several spells to ease his mind but none of them worked. Aside from discussing the plan for casting the tracking spell, I'd sat down with the hunters and Douglas to figure out what we'd do after. Everyone agreed Douglas would be the one to bring him in, but Vic spoke against Douglas executing the sorcerer. She said he needed to be stopped, but killing the man would only leave a dark mark on Douglas's soul. We'd come up with several other ways to subdue Logan and make it so he could never use magic to harm another soul. The discussion had turned into a heated argument that had Douglas and Vic inches from each other's faces, shouting. In the end Douglas had stormed upstairs, and I went after him to calm him down. He'd been pacing like a beast in a cage when I found him in my room. It had taken a few hours to convince him Vic was right. I should have known it had been too easy. I need you to make me a promise, I said, dragging him into the kitchen and sitting him down on a stool. About? About what happens after we find Logan. I've already said I'll stick to Vic's plan. I know you have, but I want you to promise me you won't go back on your word. I held his shoulders firmly, looking him right in the eye. I wish I believed there won't be a fight, but Logan won't come quietly. I want you to promise me in the heat of the moment, when adrenaline is driving you, you won't forget us. You won't forget this, I whispered and rested my hand on his chest. My hand glowed as I sent our love flowing into him. His eyes closed and he covered my hand with his. We breathed as one, our hearts beating in sync. I don't want to lose you, I whispered, my lips pressed against his. You won't. If you give in to your desire for revenge, I will. The light faded and I withdrew my hand. Douglas caught it and placed his furrowed forehead to mine. I want to promise you I won't kill him, but if he threatens your life, if he comes anywhere near you, I don't know if I'll be able to stop myself. It won't come down to that, I assured him. Since when do you predict the future? I have faith. I hugged him and debated on using a spell to put him to sleep. He'd hate me for it when he woke up, but if it saved him from corrupting himself, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Just as the spell was on my lips, the shop door opened, the bell chiming. I drew back and closed my hand around the tiny puff of magic that had been ready to seep into Douglas's back. His gaze shifted to my hand as the last bit of glow disappeared. He shook his head. You were going to use magic on me. His eyes narrowed then widened as he backed away. Were you trying to knock me out? I don't see what the problem is, I said, hating how guilty my voice sounded. He scoffed, storming away from me. Of course you wouldn't. By the goddess Helena, have you lost your mind? Do you have any idea what you almost did to me? Any idea at all? He raged as I raced after him through the storeroom and into the shop. How about saving you from being tempted to make the wrong decision? He whirled around furious, his hands clenched at his sides. So you want me to trust you but you don't trust me, is that it? You just said if I get hurt, you don't think you'll be able to control yourself. Taking the choice away from me entirely is not helping. What if something goes wrong while I'm out and I can't help you? Did you even stop to think about that scenario at all? What I would go through if I woke up to find you hurt, or worse. His hurt followed by aggravation crashed into me, and I staggered back, sucking in a sharp breath. He wasn't done. I'm already on edge and you just made it a hundred times worse. 
I'm trying to protect you. We've been over this, he muttered harshly. I don't need protecting. Really? Ah, uh, guys? Rena said, moving between Douglas and me. Everything okay? No, Douglas and I yelled at the same time. Your sister tried to put me to sleep, Douglas snapped. Rena cringed. Helena, really? I don't see what's so wrong with that idea. How can you not? He opened and closed his mouth a couple times, threw his arms in the air with a disgruntled curse and marched out the door. Rena whistled as I shook my head, spun on my heel, and headed back to the kitchen to check on the potion. What were you thinking? she asked, following. I was thinking of saving his ass. You really thought he'd be okay with missing this fight? Helena, come on. You're the empath, remember? And? I picked up the spoon. And, she said, taking the spoon from me with a worried frown, stirring the potion herself, he has a point. What do you think he'd do to himself, if he came to and found out you were dead? I know that's the worst-case scenario, but the guilt alone would destroy him. You said he's already close to falling apart and losing control. Which is why I want to spare him facing down Logan. He needs to, she argued. He needs closure. It'd be like if you found a way to put me to sleep, and dealt with Mazeroth. As much as it terrified me, I had to face the bastard down. I had to be the one who locked him away. I know you're worried, but Douglas is strong. He'll make the right decision. What if you're wrong? I whispered. She held my arm and smiled. With everything we've overcome in the last few weeks, I'm willing to go with my gut here. He'll make it through this fight. Unless the tracking spell backfires, and Logan does manage to go through with his ritual. But like I said, worst case scenario, she said with a wink and I laughed. We've got this and so does Douglas. I wish I could believe that. I roamed around the kitchen, my senses stretching toward Douglas. The second I made contact, his walls went up and I was blocked from his emotions. Damn it. Potions ready, Rena announced. Help me bottle it, would you? Trying to distract me. I grabbed three vials out of the cabinet next to Hadley's ingredient stores and went to the cauldron. Rena shrugged. It's working, right? I just want this to be over. I want Heather to come back to us and Douglas to be free from that monster's hold over him. That's what we're working on. How's Norn holding up? Rena laughed. Yeah, about that. He tried to talk you out of the plan, too. You have no idea. I didn't get any sleep last night, because of it. You and Douglas aren't the only ones fighting. Norn's terrified he's going to lose me right after he found me again. Hadley and Edric were going at it this morning, too. None of them are happy. Then let's get this done so we all can get on with our happily ever afters. Rena finished filling the vials, and we made our way back to the front of the shop. Hadley had arrived, along with Vic and Lincoln. The others were probably still helping move the townspeople to one secure location. We placed every ward imaginable on the town hall building, just in case. Logan had said he was only after the three of us, but we weren't willing to risk our friends' lives at the word of an evil sorcerer. Rena handed Hadley one of the vials, and with a nod to each other, we set to work preparing the space for the spell. Vic helped me move the display tables to the edges of the room, while Hadley knelt on the floor, drawing the necessary sigils on the hardwood. Rena gathered dried herbs and four silver bowls to hold them, one for each cardinal direction. Usually, a tracking spell would be simple to cast, but I'd promised Douglas we were taking every precaution, and I meant it. We set up the spell to call on the protection from the four directions, which coincided with the four elements. The potion we made would help shield our magic from being detected, and the herbs Rena prepared would also call on the entire Moonfall family line to keep us safe. I hoped it'd be enough. It had to be enough. Next to the sigils, Hadley drew another set of designs I'd put together early this morning. They had nothing to do with tracking, but everything to do with trapping a person of magic. While we'd been modifying the tracking spell, we'd worked in a little extra that would allow us to yank Logan from his hiding spot and drag him here. 
The crystals had been charged and were laid out in various places around the chalk-drawn circle. Hadley finished the last sigil when Edric, Norn, and Douglas returned with Lincoln. Everyone's at the town hall, Norn said. You ready to go here? Just about. Hadley stood, brushing chalk from her hands. Helena, you have the trap ready? I bit my cheek to hide my reaction to her words. Douglas's eyes narrowed as his gaze shifted from her to me. What trap, he asked. Helena, what trap? You said you were going to tell him, Hadley murmured. Yeah, well, I forgot. Liar. Douglas came toward me, but I held my ground in the face of his frustration and anger. What else are you planning on doing? And don't lie to me. Fine, you want the truth? Here it is. It makes a hell of a lot more sense to bring Logan to us than to go to him. You can't argue with that logic, so don't even try. Whose idea was this? Yours, he asked Vic accusingly. Actually, it was your girlfriend's. Douglas's anger spiked, and I winced in the face of it. You've been planning this the whole time, he whispered. Why didn't you just tell me? Because I knew you'd say no. Damn straight. It's too late. The tracking spell is woven with the magic needed to bring him to us. If we start over, we'll run out of time. We have no choice, I said, reaching for his hand. When he pulled back, my heart lurched, but I swallowed down the hurt. I'm sorry, but this is our best chance of stopping Logan. You have no idea what you're bringing on yourselves, he uttered. No idea. I steeled my nerves and shoved my emotions aside. Once Logan was captured and Heather was free, I'd deal with the fallout from lying to Douglas. Hadley, Rena and I moved to stand in the larger circle and drank our vials of the blue potion. It went down smooth, tasting of the ocean and the earth. I held out my hands for my sister's hands, and once we were joined, a rush of magic slipped from one to the other, forming an unending river of power. The lights flickered in the shop, going out entirely as the blue-green glow from our magic grew brighter and brighter. The chalk lines on the floor came to life, wrapping around our legs and upward as one by one we started the spell. I tuned out the emotions of everyone in the shop, and focused only on the magic we cast. Our voices echoed back to us as the spell grew in power, and the flow of magic intensified. My eyes slipped closed, and I was no longer in the shop but had a bird's-eye view of melancholy. My sisters were right there with me, and together we followed the pulsing trail of violet light through the dark storm clouds which were ready to unleash another blizzard. The path led us to the very outskirts of town and into the trees. Smoke curled from a stone chimney, and as we reached the end of the line a small log cabin came into view. The place had been abandoned for years, covered in dead vines and leaves. Slowly we descended to the ground, mere projections of ourselves. Hadley led the way to the cabin door. She passed through it and we followed. Inside a fire burned in the stone hearth. There was no sign of Heather, but a man had his back to us, standing at a work table. His shoulders moved as he worked at something in a bowl. Logan. His name barely raced through my mind when Douglas's wrath struck me in the back. I bit back a gasp of surprise. How the hell did Douglas know what I'd been thinking? Worried we were somehow connected because of what I'd shared with him, I stepped forward, needing this fight to end quickly. I held out my hand, and a silver chain appeared in my palm. Rena and Hadley did the same, and the chain shimmered with the spell to trap. We raised our hands as one, ready to lash the chain around Logan when he laughed darkly. Really? You truly believe you're stronger than I am? I'm going to enjoy proving you wrong. Glaring, I threw the chains just as Logan spun around and thrust out his hand. The chains wrapped around his body, pinning his arms to his sides. I smirked, ready to throw his words back in his face. He flexed his arms and the chains shattered like glass. My turn. Break the connection, I yelled, but whatever Logan had been crushing in the bowl was thrown at us and my body went ice cold. Rena screamed and disappeared. Hadley went next, until it was just Logan and me in his cabin. I fought to move, but my legs refused to listen to me. You won't win, I warned. He sneered, whispering in my ear, I think I already have. The cold stabbed at me all over. I threw my head back with a scream, 
and was slammed back into my body. I expected to open my eyes and see the shop, but instead found myself in the center of town. Heavy iron manacles appeared on my wrists and ankles. I made to stand, but a thick chain yanked me right back to the snow. Rena's panicked yell came from my right, and Hadley's cursing sounded to my left. I struggled to get free, but the manacles rubbed my wrists raw. I yelled furiously when a wall of snow shot out of the ground, and Logan stepped out of it. His black robe billowed around his legs as he bowed. Now that all our guests have arrived, we can begin. He snapped his fingers and the wall of snow collapsed. Heather stood behind it, a stone altar beside her. Atop it were the three items Logan had stolen from us. Hadley's necklace, Rena's dagger, and my ring. A fourth item shimmered into view and my heart sank. The crow-shaped silver and black hairpin had been Heather's since she was a little girl. That item he picked up and tucked in the pocket of his robes. For later, he whispered to Heather. He ran his fingers along the other three items. I winced at the sharp pain shooting down my spine. I won't lie, having the magic torn from your bodies will be extremely painful. But don't worry. If the ritual doesn't kill you, your sister will put you out of your misery when it's over. Helena. Douglas, I whispered, straining to turn and see him. Norn, Edric, Vic, Lincoln and Douglas stood inside a cage made of violet lightning. Douglas pounded his fists against it, only to be thrown back into the others. He cursed Logan, screaming that he was going to tear him apart. Logan strode around the stone altar, seemingly not worried at all. He lifted his hands, so they hovered over our possessions and opened his mouth. The first harsh syllable sent another rush of agony through my limbs as the manacles burned. I did my best not to scream, but the agony was too much. I collapsed to the ground, wondering if this truly was going to be our end. Did we fail after all? Chapter 12 Douglas I shouted and banged my fists on the cage. Each time, it launched me back into the others. I scrambled to get to my feet again and raised my arms. Norn grabbed hold of my shoulders. Stop, he ordered. We can't break out that way. Rena screamed. He tensed, running a hand down his face. Edric's eyes were narrowed in fury, his hands curled at his sides. Helena's back arched, and she crashed into the ground, every inch of her shaking in agony. The chains and manacles holding the sisters in place gave off a sickly green and purple glow thanks to the ritual Logan had performed. One by one, they also began to glow. Their magic was being ripped from their bodies, and I was trapped in a freaking cage. We're running out of time, I hissed, focusing on the problem at hand. Helena's pain slashed at me, but I was no use to her until I was out of this cage. I ran around the perimeter, searching for a way to get out, but there were no weak spots. None. Damn it. Think Douglas, Vic snapped. You know Logan's magic better than any of us, and frankly, you're the only one who can possibly bust us out of here. Helena needs you. Find a way. Find it. Rage at Logan for hurting Helena had white flames manifesting in my hands. Get back. Once the others were out of the line of fire, I raised my hands and let the flames flow, attacking the cage with everything I had. I pictured the night my coven died, heard Helena's screams as Logan stole her magic. The flames grew hotter and wilder. They sparked and roared, pushing against the bars. Heart pounding, Growing dizzy from the use of so much magic, I staggered and my arms fell to my sides. The cage held steady. I bellowed, enraged at my failure. The glow from Helena's body became brighter as the seconds ticked by. Madly, I ran my hands through my hair, ready to tear it out when the strangest sensation of Helena's hands cupping my face stilled me. How many times had she told me anger wasn't the answer? That my need for revenge would weaken me instead of making me stronger. I focused on that ghostly touch, unsure if I was finally losing my mind, or if she was reaching out to me despite Logan's dark magic. Back in the shop, I'd been standing behind Helena after they cast the tracking spell. Her magic had sparked, reaching out toward me. With each brush against my skin, I caught a glimpse of what she had seen and experienced, of what she'd felt. 
I'd seen the moment Logan broke free of the chains and stole her from my arms. We were connected, Helena and I, more so than I'd first believed. And we weren't the only ones. Edric Norn. I motioned them to join me. I need you both to focus on what you feel for Hadley and Rena. As hard as you can. What are you doing? Norn asked, his jaw clenching as Rena let out a vicious curse. Breaking this cage. I motioned for them to place their hands on my shoulders. I shut my eyes and concentrated on Helena and the intense and powerful love we shared. That day she pressed her hand to my chest and I let down my walls for her rushed back to me. The overwhelming sensation of never being alone again, of finding where I belonged and who I belonged with rushed through my veins. My magic took hold of those intense emotions and sent them into Norn and Edric. Their gasps told me it was working. I raised my hands. This time when the white flames erupted, they weren't powered by anger and hate. They were powered by the undeniable love we each held for the Moonfall sisters. Our willingness to do anything for them, to sacrifice our lives for theirs, to give them all of ourselves drove the fire until it wrapped around every inch of the cage. The lightning crackled, attempting to fight back. I pushed harder, remembering Helena's laughter and her kiss, holding her in my arms. I thought of each moment we spent together, and with an ear-piercing screech, the cage collapsed on itself. I tumbled forward, but Norn and Edric were right there to keep me upright. What was that? Edric asked in awe. A force more powerful than anything else in this world, I informed him. We need to break them free before he completes the ritual. The second we make a move, he'll know, Norn pointed out, shifting on his feet, clearly anxious to get to Rena. Leave that to us, Vic said with a wink. Lincoln, we're up. Love being a distraction, Lincoln grumbled, and the two rushed Logan. When they were within a few feet, Logan lifted his head. He paused the ritual, ducking under Vic's punch, only to be kicked in the face by Lincoln. I worried about them, until Vic pulled out two daggers, enchanted by an immensely powerful shaman. They could pierce any magic, a fact Logan was soon to discover. Heather stood by and watched, seemingly unable to do anything. Her gaze found mine. She nodded, looked to Helena, then back to me. I took the hint, and we rushed to free the sisters. Helena was on her side in the snow, face scrunched in pain, smoke rising from her body as. With Logan distracted, her body had stopped glowing, her magic safe for the moment. I tapped her cheeks, rousing her. Right here. I'm right here. I tugged at the manacles, but they wouldn't budge. Douglas. Hang on. Have to break you free. She opened her eyes and smiled. You're not going to say it. Say what? I told you so. I frowned, leaning over to kiss her forehead. Maybe later. She sat up, grunting and cursing, studying the shackles on her wrists. I know how he's controlling Heather, she told me. There's a hairpin in his pocket. If you can get it and destroy it, Maybe it'll break the bond between them. I'm not leaving you chained to the freaking ground. I tugged on the restraints as hard as I could, but couldn't break them. She grabbed hold of my chin and forced me to look at her. Get the hairpin. I'll be fine. I kissed her fiercely, forced myself to straighten, and turned my attention to Logan. White flames flickered to life in my hands. I stalked toward him. Norn and Edric joined me. What's the plan? Norn asked. Get the hairpin from within his robes, destroy it. Heather might be the only one who can break the manacles, I told them. We can't let him restart the ritual. We ran forward as one just as Vic and Lincoln were tossed aside and knocked unconscious by a burst of violet light. Logan had no time to brace for my attack. White fire surrounded his body, lifted him off his feet, and launched him through the air. Norn and Edric were on him the second he landed, grabbing hold of the sorcerer and punching him in the face. Logan's head flew back, blood spurting from his mouth. He bellowed, infuriated, and aimed his hands at the ground. It trembled beneath us, rolling and rising unevenly, forcing us back. You fools, he shouted. Now, your deaths will be slow and painful. You first. 
I threw myself at him. I tackled him around the middle, and we hit the ground, rolling away from the stone altar. I punched him, my fist encased in a fire that burned his face with every blow I delivered. He caught my fist on the fourth punch, and we tussled on the ground until he ended up pinning me to the snow. Violet eyes shimmering with malice, he brought down both his fists on my face. The blow left me stunned, and I grunted when he climbed to his feet and kicked me in the ribs. When he went for another hit, Norn shouted and grabbed him around the middle, tossing him aside. The two of us kept on him, exchanging blows. I did my best to prevent him from using his magic. I grabbed hold of his robes and dug around until Logan's eyes glowed so bright it blinded me. Enough! His yell sent me and Norn tumbling head over heels through the snow, crash landing on our backs. With the air knocked from my lungs, I struggled to rise. Logan marched back to the altar, wiping the blood from his face. Vic and Lincoln were still on the ground. I prayed they weren't dead. Now we finish this, Logan raged. You all will burn. Something hard and metallic filled my hand. I raised it and looked in disbelief at the crow hairpin. Heather's eyes locked onto it, her lips parting in anticipation of her freedom. I raised it over my head and summoned whatever strength was left in me. I squeezed the small item in my hand, sensing the darkness embedded inside it. Logan flinched, whirling around to glare at me. When he spotted the pin in my hand, he yelled, running toward me. Too late, I whispered. Using my magic, I crushed the hairpin. Logan's fierce shout echoed inside my skull, and the backlash of dark magic knocked me to the ground again. I must have blacked out for a few seconds because when I sat up, I found Logan's eyes wide in fear as thousands of crows descended on melancholy. Heather disappeared in a swirl of blue-green light as the crows flocked around her body. When they parted, her red hair blew back, and eyes that had once been violet were dark blue in seething anger. You cannot defeat me, Logan warned though his voice trembled. Heather's eyes narrowed, her hands rose, magic swirling around her fingers. I am going to destroy you. She snapped her fingers, and the murder of crows cawed so loudly it shook the snow from the tree branches. Logan hunkered down, his magic no use in the face of Heather's rage. She turned to her sisters and snapped her fingers. The manacles and chains binding them broke, freeing them. Crows faltered as Logan fought back, shooting bolts of violet lightning at them, but he hardly made a dent in their vast number. The four Moonfall sisters faced him down as he straightened and squared his shoulders. He opened his mouth, but whatever he'd been about to say was cut off as the sisters launched a massive orb of pure light magic toward the altar. It exploded on impact, and the barrier Logan had erected over melancholy broke with it. A loud crack resounded overhead as the snow globe disintegrated, and the storm clouds cleared out to sea. As the dust and snow settled from the explosion, Logan retreated. He raised his hand, and I spotted the small silver vial clenched in his fist. He glanced my way and winked. The bastard was going to escape. The rage I'd been holding back broke the walls inside me. I drew the knife at my lower back, lunging for him. We rolled until I slammed his head into the ground and held the knife to his throat. You're not getting away, not this time, I whispered hoarsely. You're going to kill me, is that it? He said, sitting upright, so his neck pressed into the blade. Go on then, do it. Murder me. They say all it takes is one act of evil to turn a witch. Trust me, I would know. He cackled, dropping his head to the snow. Come on, Douglas. You know you want to. I gripped the knife, clenching my teeth as I prepared to run it across his throat. Douglas, don't, Helena called behind me. This isn't you. Isn't it? I replied, hating Logan's wicked taunting grin. It's the only way I can have peace. The only way to stop the rage and the nightmares. No, it's not, and you know it. She rested her hands on my shoulders, and immediately my anger ebbed. You are a good man. If you take his life, it will make your pain worse. Please don't kill him. It'd be so easy to finish Logan off. So damned easy. I sucked in a harsh breath, willing myself to take my revenge. But my hand didn't move. I shut my eyes, focusing on Helena's touch and her presence, comforting me like a bomb to a burn. 
Bit by bit, the rage I'd held onto all these years seeped away, replaced by the love I found with Helena. Gritting my teeth, I shook my head. You're not worth it, I whispered to Logan and sheathed the knife. He snarled and pushed himself upright. Heather clicked her tongue, wagging her finger in his face. Just because Douglas isn't going to punish you, doesn't mean I won't. Heather, Helena cautioned. Heather winked over her shoulder. Don't worry. I'm not going to kill him. I have a much better solution in mind. She pressed her hand to his forehead. Logan's jaw dropped as his eyes went wide. No, you can't do this to me. No. His whole body glowed. Then with a loud pop, he disappeared. I frowned, not sure what just happened until I spotted the small black and white rabbit hunkered in the snow. Heather clapped her hands as she laughed. She scooped the little animal up in her arms and held him out for us to see. That should keep him contained for a few hundred years. A bunny, I mused. You turned him into a bunny? Heather smirked. Yeah, I did. Now we can keep an eye on him. Keep him trapped so he can't hurt anyone else ever again. And with him in our keeping, eventually we can track down the rest of his family. She snapped her fingers, and the bunny disappeared. Sent him to the shop. He'll be safe there. Her sisters looked at her, as if unsure of what to do. Heather's smile disappeared, and she shifted uneasily on her feet. Listen, I know. Her words were interrupted by her sisters tackling her in a bear hug. The four of them fell to the snow in a heap of laughter. Norn shook his head, a relieved smile on his face. I finally let myself relax, too. The fight was over. Logan was finished tormenting me and those I cared about. From the ground Helena's gaze found mine and she mouthed, Thank you. I crossed my arms and arched my brow, letting her know we were going to have a massive discussion later about her listening to me when I said something was a bad idea. I was not going to go through that torture again. Norn and I went to check on Vic and Lincoln, who were coming too, holding their heads and wincing. They joined in the laughter and hugging. Well done, Vic told me, patting my cheek. I take it you're going to be staying put for a while. You and Norn. Yeah, think so, I told her. Good. You both deserve some happiness. I expect we'll be passing back through before long anyway. She hummed a wedding march. I cleared my throat, willing her to go away. In all honesty, though, a wedding with Helena would undoubtedly be the best way to start our new life together. After all, she did need a new ring. I grinned, shoving my hands in my pockets. Life was going to be good from now on. I could just feel it. Chapter 13 Helena Three months later I hummed to myself, adding the final delicate touches to the wedding cake with a flick of my wrist. Dark blue irises covered the three tiers. I nodded to myself, happy with the result. Hadley might have baked her own wedding cake, but I sure as hell wasn't going to let her decorate it. You ready? Douglas asked, entering the kitchen. Wow that's one huge cake. What do you think? Too much blue. Douglas rested his chin on my shoulder, wrapping his arms around my waist. Nah, I think she'll love it. Do we need to bring it with us? Nope. The caterers know where it is. I spun around and gave him a proper kiss. My my Douglas Denver, look at how nicely you clean up. I adjusted his black bow tie with a chuckle. You look positively smashing. Don't get used to it, he murmured, tugging at his shirt collar. I'm wearing a button-down and jeans to my wedding. Sounds good to me. I winked. Douglas stilled. Really? I always took you for the fancy one. Ha, huh, no, I like to be comfortable. I leaned in and kissed him again, whispering against his lips, and I think you meant our wedding. I patted his cheek, loving the stunned look on his face giving way to happiness. I took his hand and led him out of the kitchen into the shop. With so much commotion at the house, since that's where the wedding was taking place, it had been much safer to take care of the cake here. Besides, I had to grab Hadley's something blue and something old. 
Her dress was new, and Heather had let her borrow the moonstone pendant she had from our mother. Somehow in all her time with Logan, she'd managed to hold onto the treasured heirloom. I picked up the small box off the counter, containing the two items, and turned around to find Douglas glowering at the shop's mascot. Leave him alone, I said, joining Douglas at the rabbit hutch. You sure he's stuck like that forever? Yes. Our little friend will be a rabbit until the end of his days, which will be never because death is far too easy an escape for him, I added darkly. The hutch is warded with every enchantment in the book, and then some. If he hasn't broken out yet, I doubt he ever will. Good because if he does, I'm turning him into rabbit stew, Douglas warned. The black and white rabbit chewing on a bit of celery, froze. It skittered to the other side of the hutch, as far away from Douglas as it could get, leaving behind a trail of pellets. Wow, I actually think you scared the shit out of him. Good job. Douglas smirked, holding out my heavy coat for me. I slipped my arms inside and he offered me his arm. Right. Time for a wedding. We exited the shop and followed the sidewalk down the road until we reached the long gravel drive leading to the house. The path had been decorated with streamers and paper lanterns, giving off a nice bit of heat thanks to our magic. The entire town had been invited to celebrate Hadley and Edric's wedding, something that should have taken place years ago. When we reached the garden gate, we were met by Glinda, who was handing out programs and bubbles. Everything looks fantastic, she exclaimed, hugging me. This is wonderful. That it is, I agreed and moved into the garden. The ceremony was taking place around the house and the open field above the cliffside. Douglas, Norn and Edric had spent the last two weeks building a beautiful gazebo for the happy couple to get married in. The grounds were all being kept warm by the presence of floating lanterns and heaters. Tears of joy blurred my vision. I quickly dabbed them away. I shouldn't be crying yet. I'm sure you're allowed. Besides, everyone's probably feeling the same thing. Overwhelming happiness and excitement. Wouldn't know, I commented lightly. You're not feeling anything? I shrugged. Not from them. Just you. I've been practicing. I stood on my toes and kissed his cheek. I'm going to head inside and find the bride. See you soon. I entered the house through the kitchen, dodging caterers, then a florist giving instructions on where to take the rest of the flower arrangements. I shrugged out of my coat and went straight up to Hadley's room. Knock, knock, I said as I entered then went utterly still. Hadley, you look gorgeous. Hadley grinned as she spun around in the ivory dress that hugged everything above her waist then flowed out to the floor past her hips. The bodice was covered in a floral pattern, decked out in pearls and crystals. Her hair was done up with a short veil trailing down her back. What do you think, she asked. I think you're almost perfect. I held out the small box I'd brought from the shop. Rena and Heather were up here too, dressed in navy gowns like my own. They gathered close as Hadley opened the box. Her jaw dropped. Where did you find this? Right after the fight, but it was banged up pretty badly. Douglas knows a hunter who knows a guy, and anyway, we got it fixed up for you a while back. Figured it could be your something old. Hadley hugged me so hard I couldn't breathe. Then she lifted the locket out of the box, and I draped it around her neck, securing the clasp. The necklace Edric had given her all those years ago hung around her neck, right where it should be. There, now you're just about perfect. She held up the locket, tears shimmering in her eyes. Thanks, Helena. Now, you just need something blue. I motioned to the box, and she frowned, shoving aside the tissue paper. Simple but thought they'd match the necklace. A pair of sapphire earrings rested in the box. She put them in, and her look was complete. You ready for this? Rena asked, squeezing her hand. I am, and I can't believe we're all here together again. Heather swiped at her eyes as Hadley drew her into a hug. It wasn't long until we were all crying and hugging. A knock came at the door, and it opened. Mom and Dad had flown in two days ago, and at the sight of us, Mom started bawling. We dragged her into the hug. We made it down the stairs to the kitchen, waiting for the music to start playing. 
Dad took Hadley's arm, looking like the proudest witch in the world as he studied all of us in turn. The string quartet started outside, and Rena winked, stepped out into the greenhouse with her bouquet of blue dahlias and started down the makeshift aisle through the garden gate and out to the field. My turn next, so I followed Rena's lead. She and Norn were halfway down the aisle when Douglas stepped over and took my arm. We walked toward the gazebo, grinning and waving at everyone from town gathered here for this moment. When we reached the gazebo, I smiled at Edric and moved to stand beside Rena. Heather walked out next escorted by one of Edric's close friends from Europe. Heather was blushing by the time she reached us, and the guy, Jonathan, couldn't take his eyes off her. I exchanged a curious look glance Douglas while he shrugged. The song changed to a beautiful melody that made me start crying all over again. Hadley and Dad strolled down the aisle. Edric stiffened, and he wiped at his eyes continuously until he gave up and let his happiness show. For a second I let my guard down and gasped at the intense love he had for Hadley. She reached the gazebo and Dad kissed her cheek, shook Edric's hand and took his seat beside Mom. Teresa, the head of our coven, smiled warmly at the couple, spreading her arms wide to start the ceremony. As the evening gave way to night, the gardens and surrounding fields were lit with floating balls of fire to help fight back the chill. Music played, and I threw my head back with a laugh. When was the last time we all had this much fun together? The wedding had been great. The food had been fantastic. For once, life was working out for the Moonfall sisters. Douglas tugged on my hand and pulled me away from the mass of dancing bodies to grab fresh drinks. He'd shrugged out of his tux jacket a while ago and had the sleeves of his shirt rolled up. We grabbed two hot chocolates from the table by the greenhouse and meandered around the field. I leaned against his side, resting my head on his arm, and sighed. Something wrong, he asked. No, I think everything's just about right for once. You sure you're okay with staying in melancholy? It's where my family is now, he said, laughing as Edric and Norn started ballroom dancing. Or tried to. As crazy and eccentric as they are. You're my home. He bent lower and kissed me sweetly. If you're happy here, I'll be happy here. I was thinking is all, if you still want to work with the hunters, I'd be okay with doing that too. It might be kind of fun to go off on adventures. Hunt demons and whatnot. Why my sweet Helena, are you saying you want to go kick someone's ass? The shit that Heather went through just made me realize Logan isn't the only bad guy out there. I want to help if I can, and you can't tell me you haven't been getting a little antsy sitting around doing nothing. He buried his face in his hot chocolate. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'll call Vic tomorrow and see if she's got anything for us. He hugged me to his side, kissing the top of my head. We stayed together for a long while, quietly watching the crowd of dancers, our family. Rena and Norn joined us eventually, both chuckling about something. Care to share? I asked. Rena pointed to the greenhouse. I think Heather made a new friend. Really? Heather was indeed standing with Jonathan. They were both laughing, and then he took her hand and kissed the back of it. My heart gave a little flutter. For the last few months, Heather had been struggling to get over what she'd done to us and everything Logan put her through. But our sister was making a comeback. The first time she let loose and really laughed had made us all cry. And here she was with a guy who was most certainly not an evil sorcerer. And bonus, he knows all about magic, Rena added. Seems almost perfect, don't you think? You're a matchmaker now? Norn asked. I might have done something to help it along, she murmured, then stood on her toes and kissed him. Come on. Back to the dance floor. Norn rolled his eyes, but then swept Rena up in his arms and spun her around. They took off for the dance floor as Douglas and I watched, shaking our heads. We walked arm in arm through the field, taking in the stars and the light of the full moon. For the first time in a long time, I was genuinely happy. Douglas drew me to a stop and spun me around to face him. There were no words, but he didn't need them. His love washed over me like the tide coming in, and I let it fill me up until I was dragging him down for a kiss. This was right where I belonged with Douglas and the rest of our family. From now until forever. 
Thank you for listening. This has been a Ciara Graves book. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new releases.